their football filmers, trainers, players, cheerleaders, and their families. We appreciate them all so much for their dedication and continued support of the Westwood football program. Starting with our senior filmers, Dante Gardini, unfortunately not able to be here tonight due to him. Joe Parker, Terrence, David, and Jennifer Parker. Number eight, Damon Harris, Mom, Luciana, her father.
Number nine, Mohan Hegde. Parents, Anita Hegde and Sanjay Hegde. Sisters, Maria and Anya Hegde. Count, Vina Mehta. And Uncle, Rahim Mehta. Mateo Gonzalez, parents David Gonzalez and Leticia. Number 44, Will Clifford, parents Scott and Jennifer Clifford. Sixty-four, Ahad Karidi, Mom Shaheen Raymond, and 
Thank you all. Thank you, seniors. Coach Wood would like to give a big shout out on behalf of the entire coaching staff to all the senior players, thanking them for their dedication and hard work during their, their years of work. And a big thank you to their parents for their loving support. It's game night in Central Texas. The field is ready. The fans are gathering. Soon the lights will be on. And we are ready to fire up the mics and bring it all to you. It's game night in Central Texas. And it's all right here on KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. What's up? 
Lots of questions have been answered for the Westwood Warriors in two wins to start the season. The coach and staff breaks the, breaks the season into three seasons in separate ones. The first season is done with, with those two impressive victories. The second season, that's district play. It leads directly to the third season being a possibility. That second season starts tonight on senior night, as you just heard with a true test on how ready the good guys are. Good evening, everybody. We welcome you to the reservation, otherwise known as the Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex, otherwise known as the Palace on Palmer Lane. Westwood Warrior Football and the Westwood Warrior Sports Network, powered by KMAC Sports, the Vite Media Company. In the district opener, as we talked about, Rodney Rodriguez with you, Stephen Kabler along for color, Dr. Sang Cal back there twisting and tweaking the dials, making sure everything works. The way we want it to work out tonight, and Stephen talked about the two wins, pretty impressive. But tonight, the run over Texas High, which is in the Texarkana area two weeks ago, we're supposed to lock up with Smithson Valley. That would have been one of the premier games in Central Texas last week, but Mother Nature had other ideas there. But four rounds deep last year, this Hendrickson team, and a lot of folks with the spotlight on them as a, as a possible state contender. But for Westwood, Stephen, we'll talk about them. Along the front lines, we, we've beat it into the ground. Just so successful. You see the leadership right there. And the young guys, they continue to dazzle us in the first two weeks. Yeah, you really, uh, we've really been seeing a lot of uh, maturity and growth just very quickly out of, out of the young guys. Of course, you know, we talk and we talk and we talk about how good R.J. Martinez looks back there at quarterback. Um, of course, you know, he's a sophomore. You've got Nate Anderson back there at sophomore um, in, in the running back position. And they've really come along quickly and done things extremely well through these first two weeks. But like you said earlier, it's time to turn, turn that dial up a couple more notches whenever we get in here into district play. And uh, we're really going to see what these young kids are made of. We know that the leaders, the seniors on that defense and, and, and the O-line are going to do what they can do and know, and, and, and know how to do, excuse me. Um, but really what, what it's going to take week in and week out in this 13-6A is going to be how are those young players in a leadership position coming out and performing every single week. Yeah, it, it really all starts to take shape tonight. You, you open here with Hendrickson, and then as the season goes, you're going to face a mix there. you still got Cedar Ridge to go, Stony Point, Round Rock, McNeil, I mean, the, Vandy. The sky is the limit. Just so many, so many opponents that you could face or that you're going to face, and you'll, you'll get a really good test. And something you talked about, Stephen, Nate Anderson, 219 yards. Mario Debs, 171 yards. Just such a good balance right there that, that you're seeing in that backfield. But over on the defense, those guys, your front four and your linebackers, they've just been superb. And we've watched them play um, impact plays, big hit plays. We've, we've seen those time after time. But tonight, I was telling Dr. Sankow, I was down talking to Anthony Wood before the game. We'll have our chat with the Chief here in just a little bit. These are thoroughbreds. <laughs> Hendrickson, they, they, the quality of athlete there is unbelievable. So, so this really will. The uh, weather holds out. Hopefully th this is going to be an ideal test for the young Warriors. It's one of those things, you know, you talked about it earlier, um, four rounds deep into the playoffs last year, and – it is high school football, so you're you're going to consistently bring back a large number of players every year, and so they're bringing back kids that have that experience, that that have that knowledge of what it takes, uh, the work ethic it takes to get into the later rounds of the state playoffs, and so it is something that we should acknowledge that this is a very very good football team that we're going up against this evening. And um, but a win isn't 100 percent out of the question. This Absolutely, is, this is what we've seen the first two weeks out of these Warriors is consistency in the run game, in that run game opening up um, the passing game, and when you can get all that, it allows and you can put points on the board. It allows your defense to turn the dial up and really um, attack the quarterback, get a good pass rush, and really put together a complete game. So it's going to take a great effort yeah, well. in all three phases of the game, but yep. you know how we feel about the yep. special teams in the kicking game. Sure, yep, and, and no mistakes. But we'll, <laughs> no uh, mistakes, we'll, absolutely. We'll, we'll get to that here with Anthony in just a second before we get to our chat with the Chief. Our game presented by the Westwood Warrior Football Booster Club. Their sponsors this year, ATX Football, that is the Austin Youth Football League. 
Fabulous Affairs Catering. Leslie Wellens will join us at the half for our sponsor Spotlight, so we're looking forward to talking to Leslie. Flick's Brew House along with Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin. Torchy's Tacos right there at 620 and Anderson Mill. Whataburger also right there at uh, 620 and Lake Creek. Uh, Whataburger's got some good stuff. We'll be talking about that here throughout the night. Jenny Ray Photography as well as Ed Lundry, a real estate agent. We'll talk about that as well. Just a couple of notes we want to remind you about coming up uh, on October 5th. There'll be a parking lot party uh, at, at Westwood at the high school. After that football game, it's going to be a fun time. Football team will be there, food, DJ, all kinds of fun stuff. That's October the 5th. Then on October the 12th, that's Spirit Night at Whataburger located at 620 and 183. Go support the Warriors. Enjoy yourself a nice big old fat burger or, or whatever, chicken strips, whatever it is that you that you want to have. But warriorsports.org, the official website of Westwood Warrior Football. We're going to get ready to go to our weekly presentation our season mistakes from all the young kids uh it's great doing those after wins because it's a lot easier to coach kids who are in a good mood <laughs> yeah yeah so i saw, saw a little bit last last week coach one of the things we talked about on the broadcast towards the end of the contest you're still in the balance there just a little bit a little bit of the of the mental stuff at the end of the ball game there is that the stuff you're talking about get that corrected before you jump into the stuff that really counts yeah, absolutely. I, I think last week was probably the most penalized the Westwood team has, has been uh, uh, since I've been here, and, and it's unfortunate. Um, but uh, we've got to learn from those. We, we can't let our emotions play for us uh, during critical times. And, uh, you know, penalties on fourth and 30 and stuff like that, giving easy first downs, those make the games closer than they should be. And so we've got to make sure we get rid of that stuff and, and uh, take care of business. And I think if we do that, things should uh, go pretty good tonight. We're continuing to see with with your club again a, a really nice mix of, of veteran players and and some young blood in, in there as well. How imperative uh, to you guys is it uh, for the upperclassmen? Are, are are they coaches on the field? I mean, these guys in the trenches are they are they helping lead some of these young guys uh, here with this great start that that the team's off to? You know, really, I it. it, it the, we have really good team chemistry. I, I think our older, guy, our older guys and younger kids have meshed really well together. Uh, our younger kids who are getting lots of playing time uh, are still paying attention and listening to some of the older kids. And so uh, I think it's it's a really good mesh of, uh, of talent and, uh, and leadership. And so uh, to see the way they've come out and worked together, uh, it's been really nice. We're here uh, on the field getting ready to go, uh, you, you know, a little pregame action here. Senior night coming up, uh, always a special time. Uh, we'll talk briefly here about your bunch that's getting ready to be recognized. You know, what a great, great class. Um, they, they've been a lot of fun just to be around and, and, and seeing them develop from the time they were freshmen to where they're at today. Um, it, it's, it, it, you know... It's just enjoyable, you know. Part of the, the the great thing about this job is, is getting to watch kids uh, become young adults. I mean, you really get them when they're still young. I mean, 14 years old, right. and then when they're graduating, they're 18, about to go on go out on their own uh, and head to college. And so to see the changes in them and the growth that they've had, boy, it's just a lot of fun. It's really enjoyable and and. Uh, People don't understand how much fun this job really is, but it has nothing to do with the wins and losses. It has everything to do with the relationships that you build with these kids for four years. And then the sad part about it is uh, when they're gone, it's like you've lost a child. I, and, and I don't mean that. And I know that I'm comparing that maybe the wrong way, uh, but you've, just, you've lost your best friend maybe, and, and you've lost someone that you care about quite a bit. And so when they come back and you see them on the sidelines all the time and you get texts, it, it, it's just it's nice. And so, uh, so really have enjoyed this class and uh, going to hate to see them leave. And you do seem to have such a bond with your guys. I mean, even the guys that come back or, or, or the way you follow them. And, that, and that's so uh, – so, uh, so they've got experience, but uh, uh, I, I'll take my team against their team anytime. And so, uh, like I told our kids, these are the games you like to play. And, uh, 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 you know, playing Hendrickson, no better way to start district play than with the, the, the team that everyone uh, had picked to win it. Absolutely, Coach. We'll let you get over and enjoy uh, senior night, what, what you get to do with that. Uh, but as always, uh, best of luck, and l let's go out here and uh, l let's take one from these guys. Absolutely. What a great way. Let's start 1-0 and and, and, uh, and put us at the top of District Sandys. That would be a nice way to start. You bet it would. Warrior football will continue in just a moment. There you go, the words of head coach Anthony Wood, our chat with the Chief, presented by the Westwood Warrior Football Booster Club, warriorsports.org. And as you see there, 
I mean, Anthony's been coaching 25 years, year 14 here at Westwood. Never lacks enthusiasm or confidence, it seems like. Well, you know, you got to go into these games with confidence. You, and, and the confidence that he has is not unwarranted. He's seen what his team has done the past two games, and he's got confidence in his team. What really, really is going to matter here is does his team have confidence in themselves? Yep. Do they do they look at Hendrickson tonight and say, oh, that's the team that's supposed to be – we're supposed to lose to this team, and does that make them come out flat? You really don't want to see that from this Westwood team. You want to see them come out, you know – stingy and confident and, and and hawking to the ball and just making sure that they're in the right position, making all the right plays and showing Hendrickson that this is not going to be an easy district win uh, in this game and not going to be an easy win uh, for the district as a whole. You know, it's, right. it's going to be one of those things that right now as a team, you can set the tone uh, towards this Hendrickson team and say, look, we're here, we're for real, we came to play, and we're going to smack you in the mouth. That's it. A quick start will be, will be very important uh, for the men in orange tonight. That, that will definitely be a key. Elsewhere in 13-6A, as we said, it all starts tonight, 7 o'clock, back to 7 o'clock, that's nice. Elsewhere in the district tonight, so, some intriguing matchups. Vista Ridge will take on McNeil. Both of those teams have started a little slow out of the gate, but none of that really matters anymore. I mean, we've talked about 2-0s and O's and 0-2s. And right now, everybody's 0-0 in that second season that we talked about. That's over at Dragon. That's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. Stony Point heads to Leander over at Bible. They'll take on uh, the Leander Lions, uh, that, that one there. That's a matchup where you've got what some consider middle of the pack versus, you know, maybe down to a little bit, little bit lower in the district. Game of the night in 13-6A is over at Monroe as Vandegrift will entertain Cedar Ridge. That's going to be a good one, that, Rodney. That right there is going – and we'll keep you updated on the Whataburger school board all night. But, uh, yeah, that, that right there, uh, you know, Vandy – Vandy's already knocked off Cedar Park. To come out and knock off Cedar Ridge, that would be huge for them. Yeah, that, that Vandegrift team came out and uh, really showed that they were they were here to play. Uh in those first two weeks, and and um, now they've got a real tough test ahead yeah, of them tonight. But um, they, that's a, that's a, that's a strong looking team right now. Yeah, and in action last night, uh, huge surprise, first year varsity football. The Glenn, Glenn Grizzlies they knock off McCallum, McCallum, three rounds deep last year, thirty to twenty six. Big surprise Whoa, right there. Them. Big surprise. That's got to be a big uh, confidence booster for those for those yeah. kids and for that program for in sure. general. Love that Eastview. We've we saw them in game one. They beat Reagan seventy to fourteen. Rouse over Weiss, forty one to thirteen, and Westlake all over Aikens last night, sixty seven to nothing. AISD Anderson thirty, Del Valley fourteen. Games of interest tonight. Cedar Park entertains Central High School. That will be over at Gupton. Liberty Hill on the road to Maynard. Comfort will be at Lago Vista. Lake Travis at Bowie. Big one in 25-6A to start off there. That one at Burger Stadium. Crockett at Maynard New Tech. Lehman on the road at House Park to take on Austin High. Giddings at Taylor for Dr. Sankal. That'll be a heck of a matchup right there. South San Antonio will take on Georgetown. La Vega travels to Nelson Field to take on LBJ. Keep you updated on that and, and much further out throughout the region as we get ready to go into this one tonight. But keys to the game tonight, uh, in your opinion, Stephen, what, what does Westwood need to do to come out and just silence Hendrickson? In my opinion, Rodney, they just need to do what they've done, and that's, that's run the ball early, set the tone, mm -hmm. um, and let the run open up the passing game. You know, it's, it's a... It's a pretty simple method, but it's easier said from up here in the press box than it right. is done, there, yeah, done yeah. down there in between the lines. But I really think that uh, Coach Wood needs to make sure he runs with the hot hand, whether it be uh, Nate Anderson or Mario Debs or both of them. Hopefully it's both of them. Yeah. Uh, it has been both of them the past two games, but um, whichever one of them really gets it going, uh, ride, ride it out with them, and then um, – it all it all rides on the back of your quarterback, and yeah, if does. that passing game opens and he's he's making the right decisions and the right throws, um, they have every capability of getting this game, uh, getting a win in this game. So I really think the key is going to be, uh, can they run the ball to set up uh, the 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 air attack? Yeah, yeah. 
Starting to feel a little bit more like football weather. Don't know where you may be listening in. Of course, we'd love to hear from you, www.sportsnetwork at gmail.com. Shoot us over an email and your shout-outs. I hate to use that term, but yeah, your shout-outs. Senior night, and you heard Coach Wood there talking about his seniors, and he that's one of those scenarios where I, I sit right next to him when he talks about it. You can truly feel, um, like he said, you, you feel like you're losing one of your best friends when they, when they get ready to graduate, and it, it's truly a, a real sentiment. Uh, from the old chief so we'll get ready to head down presentation of colors and we will have our national anthem down at field level we'll do the coin toss and then get ready to play some football we'll take it down to the field performance of the National Anthem by the Westwood Warrior Band as we work ourselves here towards game time. Big action coming up here tonight. Senior night. Here's how they will take to the field. Pretty easy uniform description tonight for the traveling Hendrickson Hawks. White trousers, white jerseys, blue numerals, silver helmets with the Hendrickson. They've got a blue stripe across the top for the homestanding senior night celebrating Westwood Warriors. It'll be the white trousers, burnt orange jerseys, white numerals trimmed in burnt orange. They will have the white helmets, silver and orange feathers with the burnt orange W for win. That is how they will set that up tonight as we finish up our senior night ceremonies, getting ready for the coin toss coming up here. In just a second, weather does appear to hold to be holding out very cloudy, not a lot of wind. So, again, field turf. We, we talk about weather in high school football, but so many of these fields now with field turf and all of that, they might get a little wet, but the, but the, the track itself should be okay. Yeah, the, the, the way that they engineer these things, they drain so well and so quickly, and, and they don't hold water to where um, it's really not anything – you'd really need to worry about when it comes to the weather uh it's it's more of a holding on to the football mm -hmm. issue than it is a, a slipping or a uh, sliding issue there so hopefully the weather holds off yep. it seemed like it was uh, hanging a little more south on my drive win yeah and he did so well i guess what he had four touchdowns he was uh, like one of the guys on the on the uh player of the week thing was ben coke so wow it's a nice job Westwood will receive the opening kickoff. Hendrickson wins. They defer. So it'll be Robbie Jing dropping back along with Nate Anderson. 
Nice tandem back there to run the kicks back. So they will drop all the way back. They stand around the five yard line. Hendrickson will kick it off. They will be kicking right to left as coach Chip Killian brings his team out. One and oh, canceled last week with Smithson Valley. So they are extra rested. That could be good or bad, depending what coach you talk to. We'll see how that affects Hendrickson. This is gonna be a good matchup here, as we said, a great test for Westwood to see how far this team has come as we kick off District 13 6A action right here on Friday night from the Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex, kmaxsports.com, warriorsports.org, the Vibe Media Network. Kicking it off will be number 22, Brennan Dees, the sophomore, with the ball on the tee. We get ready to go. You think they onside last week uh, like Austin Hyde did to us. Yeah, let's see what Hendrickson has up their sleeve. I'll tell you, Chip Killian, that's another one of those guys. He's a he's a crafty head coach. It worked for Austin High last, last week. Let's see what happens here. Here's Dees, we're underway from the reservation. This one, long kick, fair catch called for and made at the five by Anderson. Kind of wish he'd have brought that one out. A little bit of a strange uh, strange call there. It looked like he had, he had plenty of room. At least if he makes one guy miss, he can at least bring it out to the 15 or the 20-yard line. Uh -huh. Now you're starting in the shadow of your own goalpost at the 5, and, and that's not, not really ideal to start this game. But maybe you get a long 95-yard you know, yeah. drive. Absolutely. Starting lineup for Westwood. It will be across the front. Left tackle James Jarman. Left guard Danny Vasquez. At center, Jason Telez, right guard, Danny Lukowski, Josh Lott at right tackle. Ian Cox will be the F, the X receiver, Luca Mazzola, or um, Mohan Hegdi. The Y, Luca Mazzola, Robbie Jing, the Z, quarterback RJ Martinez, and starting in the backfield will be Mario Debs as they go left to right. And immediately whistle dead. Ball sitting on the far side hash mark. Here at the 25 yard line. And that was an official's timeout, actually. Coach Wood already out on the field. We won't do the cap watch tonight. Doesn't have one on. <laughs> no cap. So he's ready. He, he thinks this one could be stressful. He already threw the cap he's off. Ready. He was... Yeah, it's going to be stressful. Two receivers at each side. Single back in the backfield. Motion man across is Anderson. They fake the jet sweep. Go back the other way to Debs. Debs hit at the line of scrimmage. Dropped at the 25-yard line right away. Coming up, it was a linebacker making the play for Hendrickson. Blake Kemp, that's a guy we'll talk about all night. It was just to try, try and see where the defense is at. I think they're going to run that play a lot because if they give it to Nate Anderson on the jet sweep there, he's, he's running a long way. So look for that one again tonight. Trips to the near side, two to the far side, empty backfield set here out of the gun. We'll snap a little high. Martin's able to get that. Here is out of the backfield, Lyndon Jones. He's hit at the 24. He'll lose yards. Going to be about a two-yard loss there for Lyndon Jones. Is a little running back sweep, and that's to no avail, not even close. No, it was, set, it was set up all right, but he made a decision to come back in towards the middle of the field when I think uh, he had more room if he would have tried to bounce it outside. Uh, good, good idea to start the game, but just not quite executed uh, exactly the way you'd like it to. Do spot him at the line of scrimmage. Third down and 10 here from the 25, just underway from Kelly Reeves. Here out of the pistol is Martinez. Takes a snap, three-step drop, pressure coming, looking, flushed out of the pocket. Here he goes rolling left, looks downfield. This one complete at the line of scrimmage. He gets Anderson out of the backfield, but he's hit at the point of the reception, and it'll be no gain. Just a great stand by the Hendrickson defense. Three plays, no yards. Not a... I don't disagree with the, with the, with the play selection there. There was a couple of good ones, and then... Um, Martinez out there is having to scramble and get rid of the ball, but the execution just doesn't look quite quite what we'd like to see. But first drive of the game, get those jitters out of the way. Gage Mahoney drops back. He stands at the 40 for Hendrickson. We've called that name for about the last three years. Stands at the 40. Here's Jing, and he looks like he's going to fake it, but does get a punt off. A little end over in wobbler. That one rolls into Hendrickson territory, goes out of bounds at the 45. So... With 10.02 to go here in the first quarter, they will go right to left. The Hendrickson Hawks will get a peek at a pretty potent offense coming out as they are led by Blaine Barker, senior quarterback. Good test for the Westwood defense coming up right here. Yeah, they're going to have to come out here strong and, and say, hey, you, you stopped us on that first possession, but our defense is ready to play, uh, which we know they we know they can play. We know that they're, they're a good hard-nosed defense. 
Uh, so let's see, let's see what they've what they've got in store for their first time on the field this evening. Here's Barker, line of scrimmage of 45. First drive of the game for Hendrickson. Two backs in the backfield, two receivers to the far side. Empty set to the near side. Pitching it, running this way. Trying to turn up field at the 45. Breaks a tackle, brought down from behind. Nice tackle coming up from the backside by Damon Harris once again. There's Harris is just all over the field. The ball carrier, Timmy on Jackson for a gain of five, six. Second down and four. West side or Westwood side of the field. Line of scrimmage, the 49. Here's Barker, two backs in the backfield, empty set to the near side, two set to the far side. Barker, three-step drop, plants looking. This one complete out of the backfield is Jackson. He's hit at the line or at the first down marker, 45. That'll be a Hendrickson first down. And that's Not similar to the to the play that uh, that we ran a lot with that little uh, up and out um, last week. To that was very effective and uh, gets him right there for a first down. Williams and Summer, Somerville to the far side. Two backs in the backfield. Here is Barker, flushed out of the pocket. Pressure coming. Ethan Brown in hot pursuit. Gets a block. Throws this one complete at the 40. Incomplete. Pardon me. Good nice pressure. attempt there by Hester. Good pressure up the middle. Uh, good, well-timed blitz. And just uh, forced the quarterback to, to be flushed out and just uh, overthrew his receiver a little bit high on the out there. Uh, good, good uh, play call there. Second down and 10 coming up here for Hendrickson as we approach a nine-minute mark to go. First drive here for Hendrickson, a three and out for Westwood. And now it's up to the Westwood defense. Four-man front, three linebackers, two receivers split to the far side, single receiver to the near side, single back in the backfield. Barker will keep it himself. Big hole running off the left side. He's at the 25, back across the field of the 20, brought down from behind from the trailing Jackson along with 15, Cam Colvin, but a big hitter for Blaine Barker. And that's just that... that option play that we're seeing so much more in in all levels of football he the the dn makes the right call and goes goes with the running back but it just leaves a wide open hole when you got a mobile quarterback that's got some wheels he's going to burn you for a couple oh and he did there first down coming up first and 10 for hendrickson Play action fake to Jackson. Lots of running room. Touchdown saving tackle there inside the five all the way down to the two by Demetrius Jones. But it's Barker making it happen on the ground. Two back-to-back -back plays. And that's something we're going to see a lot of tonight. I have a feeling if it's working like that, they're going to keep running it. So you just got to have really good discipline and, and stay with the ball and, and read the ball and read the quarterback and go make a play. Two receivers to the near side, single receiver to the far side. First and goal, ball resting at the two. Ball on the carpet. There's Barker on top of it. Little trouble there on the exchange. Falls all the way back to the eight. So that pushes him back just a little bit. I think Barker tried to grab that snap and turn around. He's going to hand that off to Jackson. Yeah, it always helps to, to get a little bit of help like that, you know. You're, you're backed up. You give up a couple big plays, and just like that, it's second and goal from the seven-yard line, eight-yard line. So now you got a little bit of breathing room and you can uh, really go up here and make a play. Clock rolling with 7.40 to go in the first. Here's Barker out of the gun. Pitches, Jackson turns up field. Nice hit. Ethan Brown finishes him off. Initial contact, Nathan Potter is what slowed him down. Plenty of time for Ethan Brown to come on over and finish him off. And it'll be third down and goal. That's much better fundamentals right there overall by the defense. Staying firm, staying broken down in a good defensive position. And... Um, just making enough contact on the initial contact so the rest of your team can get there and bring him down. Third down and goal from the eight-yard line. Going to split out Cameron Nobles here to the near side along with Jaden Williams. Here's Barker out of the eye formation. Two-step drop, looking, throwing a jump ball into the corner of the end zone. That one up, and it's incomplete. Nice job back on the coverage as Williams went up for that. But he had a handful and an eyeful of our man, Hoover. Great ball throw, but Hoover just gets back and plays good defense. And, and it looked like um, he came down with the ball, but Hoover just gave him enough of a little, a little shove there to where he was on the end line, out of bounds. Mm -hmm. So that'll bring up fourth down and goal from the eight. Offense stays out on the field. Unorthodox set here. This one up over the head of Barker, rolling around at the 20. And this one whistled dead. Timeout called by Westwood. Boy, and you have to think, man, I wish they hadn't done that. Strange <laughs> formation there. Kind of weirded the defense out, and so they didn't really know exactly what to do. Had to call the timeout. 
Um, would have caught a break there had they not called a timeout. But yeah. in the end, you know, you got to make sure your defense is lined up correctly. If that snap does go well, you never know what's going to happen. Looked like a swinging gate formation that you would see on, a, on an extra point. It looked like that's what that was. But center all by himself, all the linemen over to the right side on the far side hash mark, snap way over the head of Barker. And that will bring up or bring out the field goal team. Here's Brennan Dees. The on the mishandled snap to push it back to the seven. And then really just stand up, stiff in the back, and say, no, you're not scoring a touchdown. And uh, kind of the bend, don't break style yes, of defense right sure. there we just saw. Give up the three points, but holding to that field goal, you got to be at least – pleased with that result as opposed to the touchdown. Indeed. ATX Football, the Austin Youth Football League, proud supporter of Westwood Warrior Football. More information at warriorsports.org. Getting kids started in football at a young age. They teach it safe. They teach it right. Right here in Northwest Austin. More information about them. Find them on Facebook at ATX Youth Football. That's ATX Football, proud supporter of Westwood Warrior Football and the Westwood Warrior Football Booster Club as they will get ready to kick this off. Also got to tell you about our friends over at Whataburger. Stop by your local Whataburger for breakfast and pick up a chorizo taquito with cheese. That's how you say it. It's a bold way to start your day. Available from 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. A chorizo taquito with cheese. Good place to get it. Whataburger. 620 and Lake Creek Parkway. You can never go wrong with Whataburger in the morning. I heard that. Any time of the night. Yeah, that's what you... Yeah. Or morning. Or morning, depending on what time you decide to go to sleep. Depending on what you're doing. Dees will kick it off. 6.40 to go. Here's Dees puts a foot into it. This one heading towards Anderson again. Takes a fair catch. Man, I, I still wonder about a Anderson's calling the fair catches and the defender's about 30 yards away. Yeah. Well, that's the second time he's done it this game. That's obviously got to be something that – he's being told to do by the coaching staff because he does have plenty of room to run. He can make you miss. I don't exactly know what the reasoning there behind that is. Not for us to Oh, I guess. Speculate. Well, he's saying that they're, I mean, they're putting the ball there at the 25. Yeah. He's fair catching it at the five yard oh, line. Oh, okay. Okay. That is, a new, that is a rule. Is that, that a new rule? That yeah, is a new rule. That's a new, that okay. I was not rule. aware of that, that rule. Okay. That is a new rule. Funny how we forget them till we see them. <laughs> there you go. First and ten, second possession coming up, and this one whistled dead for the second time. And here's Coach Wood out on the field. Headset is off. Headset is off. Same lineup. Debs is in the ball game. Hegde and Mazzola to the far side. Jing is here to the near side, and Coach Wood is actually calling the officials over. <laughs> They'll take a little uh, extra timeout here. <laughs> They're going to have their own chat with the Chief here They're early on in the game. They're chatting with the Chief. They are one of the standouts on that defense, defensive line for Hendrickson. Gain of two. Second down and eight. Clock rolling. 6.30 to go here in the first. Three to nothing. Westwood going left to right in the first quarter. In the burn orange. To the near side. Lyndon Jones split deep. Robbie Jing over on the far side. It's Mazzola along with Hegde. In the backfield is Debs, out of the gun. Here is R.J. Martinez, the sophomore quarterback in motion. Debs going to the far side, takes a snap, swing pass complete. Here's Lyndon Jones at the 30, turning upfield to 35, taking some defenders with him, bouncing, rambling all the way down to the 46-yard line. Lyndon Jones. And really just a clinic right there on ball security. He had about four defenders constantly trying to rip out that ball, and he holds on to it, and while he's holding on to it, he is that young guy. A lot of good athletes on this Hendrickson team. You look across the front line there and their linebackers. Pretty what, good group. What you do love to see about Nate Anderson is that uh, he made sure Big 68 knew who he was too on that collision. He Indeed. didn't go down easy. He kept fighting to get back to the, uh, to the line of scrimmage there. Jones in. He'll split out to the far side, inside. Now Robbie Jing to the far side. Two receivers to the near side. Anderson in the backfield. Third down and five from the 49 here in the first quarter. Three to nothing ball game. Here's Martinez looking. Deep drop. Now flushed out of the pocket. Running right. He will toss this one out of bounds. Nothing there. Thought he might go for Mohan Hegde, but Hegde was in between a couple of defenders, and he just tosses it into the sideline. And that's one of those where... He's got a lot of room to run, and if he takes the ball up to the line of scrimmage and gives the, gives the DB a little bit of a pump fake to make him think he's going to throw the ball, he can get himself an extra five, six, seven yards and maybe swing a first down there. 
But uh, smart play early in the game. Don't want to get a turnover that gets this Hendricks defense, Hendrickson defense um, rallied and, and ready to go. So just throw it away, make the smart play early in the game, punt the ball. This time it's Adam Cousins dropping back. He stands at the Hendrickson 12. Here's Jing. High kick, end over end. Takes a bounce and will roll all the way down to the 20. Laid it right down at the 20, just like he was planning to do. Second punt of the ball game for Jing. So with that drive by the Westwood offense, saw the three and out the first time right there. Pick up the first down. So building a little bit of momentum there, it looks like. Building momentum for sure. Um, and then at least getting to the other side of the 50. So when you punt the ball, you're you're making Hendrickson start down at their 20 and, and not not further up the field like they did on their first drive. Make them earn a little bit of a, a few more yards here uh, if they want to try and get a score. But here we go, defense again. Um, coming out here, gonna, gonna show us what they're all about. Going right to left, 434 to go. Pump fake this direction. Barker flushed out of the pocket penalty marker. That'll be a hold. This one will fly out of bounds as Ethan Brown was coming with a head of steam. And they held him just a bit. No hold was going to stop him there. He got off that hold and was uh, still right there, right there in the face of uh, Blaine Barker. Uh, but obviously clear as day on the hold right in front of the referee. I think the and barrels down to the 25-yard line. He slid about four yards. And a nice pickup on first down for Hendrickson. It was a good. It, it, it was a good defensive play on the uh, on the option, but didn't. It was just. Uh, Missed tackling that allowed him to get to get the extra yards there. So you really got to wrap up and make sure you're bringing guys down. Line of scrimmage to Hendrickson, 25, second down and five, with 3:55 to go in the first. Single receiver to the far side. Here's Barker dropping back. Pressure coming once again. That's Harris throwing the deep ball wide open. Hauls it in at the 40, but it's all for nothing. Out of bounds. Ball floated just a little bit. Not able to pull it in inside the field to play. Just threw it out over the out, over the receiver's outside shoulder and uh, just not quite enough in play. Looking for Burns. Burns and had a couple of steps, too. You want to talk about Burns burning someone. He mm. just took off from the line of scrimmage and never looked back and was, was wide open, but got a little lucky there on the, on the ball. Big third down coming up. Third down and five from the 25. Westwood defense, four-man fronts, trips to the near side. Here is Barker going to keep it himself. It's worked all night. Here he goes again. The 35, the 40 to the far sideline at midfield. Turns back to the other direction. The 45, the 30, breaking through arm tackles. He'll be stopped at the 27-yard line. Big hitter. That was run all the way. There was no option. There was no play action. He, he took the snap and took off and found a hole. And uh, he's got he's got good field vision to be able to run like he's like he was running. 47 yards there on the first down. Clock rolling, 3:20 to go. Brand new set of downs. Two receivers each side. Barker looking, throws this one up. Oh. Letting Jackson do the rest there. Great play fake from Barker once again. There's that swinging gate formation. Now it makes sense, right? Now it makes sense. But here comes the extra point team out. 3:04 to go here in the first. Nice drive by the Henderson Hawks. They go right down the field. And it'll be Michael Skiles on for the extra point. Snap a little low, but Skiles able to get underneath that one and puts it up and true. 3.04 to go here on senior night in the first quarter from the Palace on Palmer Lane. Your new score, Hendrickson 10, Westwood nothing. Westwood football continues in just a moment. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you're needed. Visit Austin Pets Alive live.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive, helping people help pets. Hendrickson out on top of Westwood here on senior night. And this is really when I think you got to start letting them run it back. You really need an explosive play to get your team energized, excited, and get yourself back in this game. And we know that, that both of the return men back there can do that, especially Anderson. Here's Drees. Dees, pardon me. 
Fair catch called for at the one by Anderson. Once again, they'll bring it out and set it down at the 25. And again, that's a, that's a safety rule there because that's a head of steam when they're coming down that field. That is, that is a good point. That is one thing that, you know, these kickoffs have been uh, obviously a big po point of contention in all levels of football. Um, and, you know, got to make sure the safety of the kids is priority number one. Penalty marker back here at the 42, way back on the Hendrickson side. Somebody took off just a little too early, and that, that's one of the other rule changes, of course, as well. You can't, can't take off from the line of scrimmage until the foot's in the ball. And is that, uh, that going to be a re-kick or just a, yeah, a march off? They'll just add five yards to it. They'll set it on the far side hash mark at the 30. So best field position of the night for Westwood by five yards. Way, we'll take it all day. They'll really? go left to right. Sorry. No, he's fine. Really just got to really want to see this this run game go, you know. Um, and, and one thing you, you can call the run is the little screens that we've been doing, and those have worked. So let's see what they what they decide to go with on this offensive possession. Heck, D. Mazzola and Jing here to the near side. Anderson in the backfield out of the gun. Here is the give. Anderson trying to find some running room. Kind of picks and chooses, and it's just not there. He'll be dropped for a yard loss back to the 29. I really think they need to start trying to get Anderson out to the edge. Um, spread the field, make him play all 50 yards from sideline to sideline. Lyndon Jones checks in. He'll split to the far side with Jing. Here's Hegde to the near side with Mazzola. Anderson stays in, cocks in as a blocking tight end. Out of the gun. Here's Martinez. Drops back looking. Downfield. Throwing the deep ball. One-on-one -on -one coverage back there. That one over both of them. As he was looking for Jones. Spot-on coverage back there by Hendrickson. Nice job by Martinez to put it where neither one of them was going to get it. It just looked like Jones was trying to work his way back into the center of the field where Martinez was throwing it, but the coverage was too tight, and he, he was right. He was riding with him the whole way. It was, wasn't allowing him to, to get inside as quickly as he'd like. So that'll bring up a third down and 11 for Westwood. Trailing 10 to nothing. Line of scrimmage is to 29. Two receivers to the near side, single receiver to the far side. Anderson stays in the game in the backfield. Here's Martinez, rolling right, looking. Pressure coming from behind. He will be dropped. Does get rid of the ball. But there was all kinds of pressure coming from the backside. Big Michael Ike, junior defensive lineman, penalty mark at the end of the play. Are they going to get him for intentional grounding? He dumped that one over to the sideline. Nobody really around there. Body language on Hegde would make it seem like you have the correct call, Stephen, but we'll wait and see. He tossed the flag, the, the ref tossed the flag right there at the ground at Martinez. I would assume that's, yeah, that's going to be the call there. So they're going to set this one back somewhere around the 15 here for this Hendrickson offense. 2-10 remaining, Hawks lead by 10. Yeah, you've really got to give it up to Jing here as he's been uh, with his punch tonight. I mean, he's had pressure in his face all evening on his three punts, and he's been able to get them off and get pretty decent punts punts away. I mean, he was standing at his own five-yard line and kicked that one down all the way to the 50 here. So um, if you're the Westwood defense, you got to be tired at this point. Yeah, a lot, a lot of time on the field. A lot of time on the field here for the good guys and on the defensive we, side. And it looks like we have a change of quarterback. Absolutely. Shuffling the deck just a little bit. Here is, I believe that Lucio, no, trying to turn up field, Lucio does, and he's driven out of bounds inside the 45 at the 44. Xavier Luc Lucio, the quarterback. Here's Barker coming back in. Just a little bit of play calling there, play better designed for Lucio, running over on the outside where Barker's gone right up the gut. Well, maybe they were trying to see if, if Lucio's a better, is a, he might be a better runner than Barker. Maybe they're seeing, they were thinking that it's not. been. Yeah, let's hope <laughs> let's not. Let's hope not. Because we've got, we've got a good runner here in Barker in the backfield. <laughs> but maybe they were just trying to see where, where he could take the ball. Second down at seven. Here's Barker on the zone read. Gives at the 40, the 35, all the way down to the 32-yard line. And this time, it's Donnie Newsom, the senior running back. They'll spot him at the 30. That'll be a Hendrickson first down inside two minutes to go here in the first. He just wiggled through a hole that I didn't even think was there. <laughs> he found it, and he shoved his way through and got a few extra yards out of it. Um, the linebackers really got to step up and, and, and block those holes. Going right to left out of the I formation. Here's Barker. Play action fake to Newsom. Looking pressure coming. Throwing the deep ball wide open. I could grab that one. Touchdown, Hendrickson. K. Ree Somerville. 
gets outside the coverage, standing at the five-yard line, pitch and catch with Barker. Absolutely no one out there. Just a miscommunication in the backside of the Westwood defense. And I thought Barker was going to take off and run with it. And by the time he threw it, we looked up and there was a white jersey sitting over there in the end zone with his tent up and, and his lawn chair hanging out. Yeah. Had everything he needed there. Had a Whataburger thick and spicy. Kick is up and good. Play along, 135 to go here in the first. We'll keep it here. Hendrickson has jumped out 17 to nothing quickly on Westwood, as we said. Uncharted territory here for Westwood. Haven't trailed. Have they trailed? They did trail. Trailed in the Eastview game. But you come out and you're seeing a team totally different from anything that you've seen all season. Absolutely. I completely agree. We're not seeing the physicality up front, getting that initial push for your for your run game to get going. Um, we're not really seeing the best R.J. Martinez that we've seen in the past two games. And obviously you have to attribute some of that to the Henderson defense. You can't just say it's all, um, you know, on the, on the Westwood side of the ball. But they've really got to come out here and, and step up the game just a little bit. And, and this game is not, not out of control just no. yet. We've still got plenty of football to be played. And, and so they just need to come out here, get, that, get those first points on the board, settle in a little bit and say, okay, you know, get, it, get a good sustained drive, get some points on the board and say, look, we can do this. We can score on these guys. We can move the ball. And, and once, once that happens, you, you could see it click all together. Absolutely. 17 to nothing. And dropping back deep, Anderson and Jing. It's one of those games where a, a big play on special teams can get something happening. Here's the kick. This one way deep. This one carries Anderson all the way back into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 25. He takes a snap. Flings it across. Picked off at the 28-yard line. Did not see that defender coming across. Trey Diaz, senior defensive back, just robs him blind. I don't even think Trey Diaz knew the ball was in his hands until he was on the ground with the ball in his hands. He looked like he was just going to make a play on the quick slant there and just was saw the ball appear in front of him, took a big lick, but was able to hold on to the ball and uh, really just just an unfortunate turn of events right there for Westwood. You really needed to put some plays together and try and get some points on the board, but now you force your defense that's been on the field the majority of this game to come back out and try and try and stop Hendrickson on a short field and um, something that really they they struggled to do here in this first quarter but let's see if uh, see if they can get it turned around going right to left from the 25 here's Hendrickson leading 17 to nothing Barker out of the gun trips to the near side gonna keep it fakes the option turns up field at the 20 inside the 20 all the way down to the 16 yard line Gain of 13 yards on first down for Blaine Barker. They'll move the sticks. Clock stops momentarily with 1.10 to go. And it's that quarterback run. We're going to see it all night tonight. And anytime that Barker's got a chance to run, he, he's going to take off and do it. He likes to run. Clock now rolling. Here's Barker on the give. Jackson bouncing to the outside. Running right. Turns upfield at the 12. He's hit at the 10. Spins around. Breaks a tackle. Hit hard at the 5. He'll be dropped there by Will Clitheroe. Which is hard running. It's hard to catch a shifty, fast back like Timion Jackson. And he just turns and cuts moves so quickly that you think you have him, and whenever, whenever you're falling down trying to get a tackle, he's out of your hands moving on to the next defender to make miss. Clock stops as they reset the chains. Now rolling with 40 seconds to go. First and goal here in the first quarter. Line of scrimmage is Westwood four off of an interception by Trey Diaz. Hendrickson looking to add to their lead. Out of the pistol, here's Barker. Two receivers to the near, near side, single receiver to the far side. Going to give it to Jackson. Oh, no, play action. Burned me. Sprints around four yards easily into the end zone. Touchdown, Hendrickson. It's just the, it's, it's the read option there for the quarterback. He really owned and operated. It's a great place to go watch a film. Flix features Florida ceiling screen. Superb Dolby surround sound. A real kitchen making real good food. The whole family will love it at a very reasonable price. It's all available from the comfort of your seat during your movie. Plus, Flix is the only first-run cinema in the world with an on-site brewery plus dozens of local and regional flavors. If you've tried other theaters and want more, it's time to check out Flix Brewhouse. Find out why Flix 
is one of the fastest growing theaters in the country. Get tickets now at flicksbrewhouse.com. Proud supporter of Warrior Football. If this storm comes in, Flix Brew House may be a better place to be because this is looking a little daunting out here with the gray clouds, some of them a little black. But they look it looks good in the Friday night lights. So. It does. It looks good in the Friday night lights. And one thing we want to see look a little better is this Westwood offense. That would be nice. That would be nice. At this point, you need to get a drive. You, you need to have some sort of sustained drive, get at least a first down. Lit that defense. You see them over on the sideline. Get those guys rested up just a little bit. Here's a kick to Anderson. He'll take the fair catch, and they'll set it down at the 25. 21 seconds remaining. And you're exactly right, Rodney. You've got to put something together, whether it's, you know, one or two first downs or a full drive to get some points. But this defense is just exhausted at this point. They've been on the field for the majority of this first quarter, and they've got to be able to get a quick breath in so that they're ready to go out and, and really take it to the Hendrickson offense on the next time that they're out there. Yeah, first play of the last drive, an interception. Trips to the far side, single receiver, or two receivers to the near side. This one batted away. Just Martinez, just nothing he can do. Pressure in his face immediately. This time it's Curly Young. That's another one of the guys. Just a standout on this Hendrickson defense. And he just got a real, real quick push there on the uh, on the outside, near side, outside, towards the towards the quarterback, towards RJ, and just put his big old paws up there and knocked it out of the air. Second down and 10, ball at the 25. 18 seconds to go here in the first. I bet the Westwood coaching staff is ready to be done with this first quarter. Oh, it's I would like, have man, to let's, agree. Let's end this. Put let's, it behind him. Yeah, let's, let's try to go the other direction. Let's, let's For Westwood football, outside of football, October 5th, parking lot party at Westwood High School after the ball game. Celebrate everything Westwood and the team, football or food, DJ, it's going to be a grand old time. That's October 5th. Then on October 12th, at Whataburger, 620 and 183, come support the Warrior football team and enjoy a great Whataburger meal. All of your favorites on the menu. That is on October 12th. Nothing like a good parking lot party in high school football. I heard all right, that. All right, all right. <laughs> Motion man's Anderson across. Enjoy this game years in the future. Send us a note to info at kmaxsports.com. That's I-N-F-O at kmaxsports.com. We can even do some editing for you for a small fee. Purchase any broadcast for personal use. Hit us up, info at kmaxsports.com. Bringing your teams and your highlights to you. We are KMAX Sports. WWSN, the Westwood Warrior Sports Network on senior night back home at the reservation. Warriors in trouble here against a very good, and, that, and that's the other thing, Stephen. We, you see, 24 to nothing on, on your screen there, but this is a really good football team across the way. They are, they are a very good football team, but there's also been plenty of mistakes, and we talked about earlier. You got to have a, a, as as a mistake-free game as possible if you want to beat this team, and there's just been too many of them tonight. Missed tackles, um, not, not playing good, solid, fundamental defense, letting the quarterback get away from you, and then, of course, that interception there. Um, you never like one-play drives unless they're 75-yard touchdown passes. From the 32 to start the second, they go right to left. Third down and three. Here's Martinez. High snap, snap, screen. Lyndon Jones trying to find some running room at the 30, trying to get to the stick. He does. Gets past the 35, down to the 37-yard line of Westwood first down. Very earned by Lyndon Jones. Acosta, or pardon me, Kemp in on the stop for Hendrickson. Big first down there, good running right there. And um, from, from Lyndon Jones, great running, making people miss and doing everything he can to get to the sticks there. Two receivers split to each side. Here is Martinez. He has Debs in the backfield with him out of the pistol, standing to the left. Martinez awaits a snap, takes it. Three-step drop, looking, throwing the deep ball over the middle, looking for Jones, just a miscommunication there as Jones on a curl route, throws a deep ball over here to the far side, incomplete. And what he's looking for there, I believe he had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, and, and the one-on-one -on -one coverage is pressing up on him. And Hegde there just wasn't able to, to, to get a block there on the DB. It popped out of his hands. A uh, little, little bit behind him. Great adjustment to try and make the catch, uh, but just wasn't quite able to haul it in. 
think if he makes that catch at this point in the game, you may think about going for it there with about three or four yards to go, but can't quite get it. Here's uh, another punt on the evening. Here's Mahoney back at the 28. Jing, pressure coming, and hot pursuit is Curl, Curly Young, and will drop him. Hard to outrun Curly Young, and he runs down Robbie Jing, kicking out of that soccer formation. Just that's, can't get away. That's just something that you really didn't want to have happen. You've really got to punt the ball there. You didn't, you didn't have enough room to get the first down. You're getting chased by a speedster there who's going to, get, who's going to tackle you every single time. You've got to do something you can to put foot on leather there and try and get the ball at least a little bit down the field. You've given Hendrickson another short field that they have just made look easy all evening. Yeah, he's fighting at the Westwood 34-yard line. Here comes the Hendrickson offense. Ball on the far side, hash mark going left to right here in the third. Quarterback change. Once again, it's Xavier Lucio out of the gun. Trips to the near side. Motion man across. A little bit of confusion there is coming across was Jaden Williams. And it is a false start across the front there. So one of the few mistakes we've seen from the Hawks tonight. And you'll take anything you can get at this point. Looks like Lucio will stay in. <laughs> And whenever you see number 11 come in the game, you got to think quarterback run. He's he's just a, kind of a, a smaller guy compared to uh, compared to Barker, so you got to think run here. Newsom stands in the backfield. Here's the snap, swing pass complete out at the 38, turning up field. Lots of running room, finding the far sideline. One man to beat, and he will go in easily. Jaden Williams on the swing pass, 39 yards, touchdown, Hendrickson. And that's just as good as a run in my book. You throw it out there on the edge, and you. You just let your receiver make the people miss, and you get into the end zone. That, that was quick, though. Very quick. Um, he just beat everyone to the edge and scampered on the sideline for a touchdown. And like we've said all night, you've got you've got to attribute some of that to the defense just being being exhausted at this point. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Here's Skiles. Let's kick up and good. Thirty-five to nothing. <laughs> And one thing, obviously, here with this, Stephen, the, the team speed of Hendrickson is something that Westwood, you can, you can animate this, you can try to do this in practice, you can do whatever you want, but until you actually see it, again, you didn't see it with, with Eastview, Austin was a pretty quick team, but not anything near this. Oh, I completely agree. Every single player that you see out there has just got another level of athleticism that I don't think this Westwood team has seen in those first two games, like you mentioned. So it's one of those where you got to understand that this is a different level of athlete. You going, you know, we've got those level of athletes on this team. Um, they're just not making the plays that, the, that, that should be being made right now. And that's something that, that the coaching staff is going to have to try and settle this team down every time they get a chance to talk to their units and, and really try and tell them, you know, you gotta, you got to do something to try and put yourself back in this game. 10.24 to go here in the half. Jing drops back along with Anderson. 31 to nothing. Halftime show coming up. We will have your Westwood Warrior Band. Sundancers and Leslie Wellens of Fabulous Affairs Catering will join us. We'll talk a little catering business. We'll talk a little, talk a little food, a little customer service. Lord knows I'll harp on about planning a party. Here's the kick. This one bounces. Oh, that one off of the pause. That one off of Westwood as it looked like Gonzalez grabbed a hold of that, and that is Hendrickson Ball. And it just seems like they... They can't get out of their own way. Everything that could go wrong tonight has for this Westwood side. And and this is really just not, not what you would want to see, but it gives you some opportunity to take a look at film later on in the week to, to see what you can fix. But that is that is just not um, not what we were talking about needing right now. Yeah, and, and that's a play where, where Gonzalez looked like Mateo Gonzalez saw that ball, probably wasn't expecting it, just wanted to make a play. I, I mean, you, you can't fault the kid. I mean, it's 31 to nothing, but yikes. Short field, very short field here for Hendrickson. And here's Lucio back in the game. He takes it, run all the way. Actually, that's not even Lucio. Penalty marker on the field, bouncing out of bounds at the 15. This time it's Nathaniel Davenport, junior quarterback. 
Penalty marker laying back at the 26. That's and about holding range, you'd think. Yeah. Indeed. And call against the Hendrickson Hawks. They will back that up. So what you see with this Hendrickson ball club is not only do they substitute players, they substitute in packages, it seems like. You got Jackson in the backfield, and you make a quarterback change. You bring Newsom, Newsom in. Now you're on your third quarterback. And they just got, and they're so deep at every position that they can just bring in fresh legs, fresh bodies whenever they need to. And um, that's obviously a huge advantage. First and 20 from the 33, empty backfield. And look and run all the way. Here's Ethan Brown giving pursuit. He's shoved down, turning upfield here at the 30. Thought we might have a block in the back. Goes out of bounds at the 20. I don't know how it's you don't call, I don't know how you don't call that. That's a clear block in the back right there. Um, completely taking uh, Westwood out of the play. He's, I, I don't. I, yeah, Brown. Oh, totally. Now we have there, there it is. Out. As Barker checks back in, group and get ready for the next one. All the way down to the 10 on the unsportsmanlike penalty. First and goal. Here's Barker back in the ball game. Motion man across. Jet sweep. Turning up field. Brought down at the six yard line. Falls forward to the four. This time it's Nobles. And they do spot it at the five. Second down and goal. Newsom in the backfield. Just shift athletes around so quick. He said it's so much speed, so many, the depth here of this team. Out of the eye formation, here's Barker. Second down and goal. Four man front from Westwood. Newsom running off left guard. Gets inside the four, down to the one. He's got a nice shove at the end of the play. He did get a little bit of extra help there and, and that's just your, your stereotypical run play up the middle. Uh, off the off the left tackle there, and uh, they were able to get some. Uh, Westwood defensive line was able to get some good pressure, but again, the caliber of these athletes that they're playing is, is he's just was had the, the strength and the ability to keep those legs churning, and and fall down for an extra two or three yards. Metzger replaces Hawkins. Hawkins holding his thigh there, back of his thigh, able to get off the field in time. Third down and goal here from the two. 8.26 with the clock rolling. Out of the eye formation. Two receivers to each side. Motion man across. That's Mahoney giving it to Newsom. He will try to, oh no, he's not. Over to Mahoney. Over on the other side. And they both could have walked into the end yeah, zone. He, he, he pitched it out to Mahoney because uh, he's already got a touchdown tonight. Barker's already got the touchdown for the evening, so he was letting his, uh, his, his, his wide receiver score there. But um, everybody bid on that play action in the middle of the field was sucked up into the center, into the scrum there in the middle by the play action, allowing um, Barker to um, be able to pitch the ball for a walk into the end zone there to Mahoney. Very easily kick is up and good. 8.13 to go here in the first half, 38 to nothing. Hendrickson has jumped on top. Well, friends, Whataburger has some great news for you, steak lovers, as they have finally announced the return of the A1 Thick and Hearty Burger with two 100% beef patties, crispy bacon, melted American cheese, and that one-of-a-kind A1 Thick and Hearty sauce. This is the burger for those who love steak. So if you've been wanting to it for if you've been wanting it to come back, we'll stop because it's only available for a limited time, but it's back. This is the A1 Thick and Hearty Burger at your Whataburger. And of course, the Whataburger of choice for Westwood Faithful is Whataburger at 620 and Lake Creek Parkway. Parkway. Always a good burger. Yeah, that's my uh, that's my burger of choice there from the Whataburger menu. Yeah, that, that's a good one. That is a very good one. 38 to nothing, our score here on senior night. Have to think about that when you look at it in senior night and you, you draw Hendrickson. Yeah, it's got to be tough. Um, you know, you know these players really want to come out here and, and give it their all and play to their absolute best in front of, um, you know, family, friends, everybody. And this Hendrickson team has just seemed to be on a completely different level than uh, than really anyone. Yeah, this, this is this season. It's 
This is a this is a state powerhouse here. This yes. is make no bones about it. This is good. Here's Jing. Jing. Robbie Jing sprints across the field, hauls that in at the 22. If he'd have been able to stay in bounds, he would have run that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. Not yeah absolutely. You put you put the hands team after last year. Yeah. Put the hands team in, and with someone like Jing who does so much for this team, yes. anytime he gets his hands on the ball, he wants to make a play. If he would have been able to hold his momentum from going out of bounds, he would have made a couple people miss and lowered his shoulder and tried to get every inch he could yeah. have out of that return. They, they may have had the not return on, but he's going to return he's it. He's going to take that one. Elsewhere, 244 to go in the half. McNeil leads Vista Ridge 28 to 14. That's a KMAC sports game. You can catch that on the network. Stony Point 13, Leander nothing. Cedar Ridge continues to lead Vandy 10 seconds to go in the first half there in that ball game. We get the 7 o'clock starts here in 13-6A. Makes it kind of nice. Here is the first down play. Not a whole lot of running room there. Falling forward for a one-yard gain as Mario Debs talked about these two backs. Talked in the first two ball games how Westwood has controlled the line of scrimmage and, and quite handily for that matter. Eh, little, little roll reversal here tonight. Absolutely. 6.45 is the clock rolls. Third down and 22 for the good guys. Two receivers to the near side, keeping it on the ground. Here's Debs out to the 12, gain of two. You have to think that's a play call, Stephen, where it's just like just try to stop the bleeding for a little bit. Don't don't want any mistakes down here. Yeah, it's especially at third and 22 when you're backed up inside your own 15-yard line. There's no reason to try and get all 22 of it back. I mean, if you if you happen to bust a big run out, then, yeah, you'll, you're happy about it. But if you take a deep shot down the field and you throw another interception, give the, the Hawks here a chance to run it back, maybe get another quick score, that's – it's not what you want to see, and, and here on this punt, this is a big, this is a big punt. You got to, got to get this punt off. You can't try and run it like you're, like, like you're going to get 22 yeah. yards back. Yeah, and, and and pin these guys back. Here's Jing. Nice, nice kick. Kicks this one straight up. A little wobbler. That one goes out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. I guess they'll spot that probably somewhere around the 38. But great field position here with 5:51 to go for Hendrickson. And I feel like that's what we've been saying all night. Yes, yeah. is great field position for Hendrickson. It's not like it's not like all of their offensive possessions have been 80, 75, 80 yard drives. They're sitting there and they're starting, and most of their drives are 25 to, to 40 yards in the into the end zone. So it's it's one of those where if you can flip the field at some point, maybe you can start to to impose your will on defense just a little bit. But until you get that field flip. You're going to be stuck in the same vicious cycle of of, of, uh, of your defense being out there with a short field. And here's Lucio out of the gun. Quick play action. Pass complete at the 32. Turning upfield at the 30. The 25. Will Clitheroe in. Could be a flag right there. He slams him down out of bounds. Martavian Burns. I think he started his suplex slam <laughs> inbounds. That was a German suplex right there. Yeah, seen absolutely. And then he was already in the motion of doing it whenever they were out of bounds. So uh, <laughs> thankfully no no penalty flag there. Lucha Libre here on uh, Championship Wrestling on Senior Night. Out of the I formation. Swing pass out to the far side. This is Mahoney. Upfield at the 20, down to the 15, close to the first down as he's brought down. Just great speed there for Mahoney. Connor Cooper in on the stop for Westwood. He'll be a yard shy of the first down. And they're going to get Demetrius Jones there for the offsides. Uh, obviously going to decline that penalty, but he was uh, blitzing off the edge there and just didn't. He, he, tr he tried to get back uh, on his side, of the, on the defensive side of the ball, but was just a little bit there in the neutral zone. Uh, easy call for the linesman, but um, still giving up chunk plays here for the defense. So here's Lucio, third quarterback we've seen here for Hendrickson. Second down and one. Takes a snap. Lucio flings it, complete, turning upfield at the 10, down to the 5. Finally brought down by a host of Warriors is James Hester. And that's a good bit of team tackling right there, but you've got him essentially wrapped up six yards further back, and uh, you just can't make the tackle, and you got to wait for more players to get there to bring him down, allowing him to get an extra five or six yards and setting up uh, six, you know, first and goal and yeah. six. Yeah, making it look easy. Here's Lucio. Newsom in the backfield, two receivers to each side going left to right. 5.05 to go in the first. 
half. Motion man across. Jet sweep turning straight up field into the end zone. Touchdown. This time it's Cameron Nobles for six yards. Just imposing their will on the run game. You know, we haven't really seen, other than that, that one wide open touchdown pass from Blaine Barker, we really haven't seen um, these Henderson quarterbacks have to throw the ball. And it's really just been a constant running game from them. And they're doing exactly what we said Westwood needed to do, is just use that run, use that run, use that run until they stop it. And Westwood hasn't really been able to stop it. And I'm telling you, Demetrius Jones is going to get a block <laughs> at some point in this season on an extra point or a field goal. He is close. Mahoney sets it down. Skiles puts it through. 4.55 to go here in the first half from Kelly Reeves. New score, Hendrickson 45. Westwood nothing. Westwood football continues in just a moment. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the Congress Avenue Bridge Bat Colony. Okay, folks, here they come. They're flying out from under the bridge. They appear to be Louisville Slugger, and they're falling. Oh, ah, oh, the humanity. As God is my witness, I fought. Bats could fly. Bringing your teams to you since 2003 without dropping the ball or the bat. We are KMAX Sports. 4.55 to go in the first half. Back at Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex. A reservation 45 to nothing. Westwood trails the Hendrickson Hawks. Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin. 12309 North Mopac. Location in Lakeway as well. If your allergy, your sinus issues, all of that has got you frustrated. Check them out. Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin. They offer medical and surgical solutions for nasal congestion. Get it done. Get it done right. Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin. Proud supporter of Westwood football. 45 to nothing. Westwood awaits the kickoff as we work towards half. Jing back along with Anderson. This one, fair catch call for him made at the 22. This time by Ian Cox. They'll set it at the 25. First and 10 for the Westwood offense. Stephen Boy, at this point, you, man, points would be, uh, three points, anything would be just absolutely great right now. Really just a good quality sustained drive to the other side of the 50 would be something that you'd <laughs> like to see right now. We really haven't seen um, anything that you really would look at at halftime and be like, hey, we like that. Um, it's just been total domination here from the Hawks, but you still have 455 here. If you can get a good drive together going into halftime, you can build a little bit of momentum, get some points on the board, and um, and feel and feel a little bit better about how you've played. Going right to left, two receivers at each side. Here is Martinez. Quick pump fake. This one intercepted at the 40. Going back the other direction. This time, it's Miles Brooks way back around midfield. Escapes a tackle. Turns up field. Jing tries to make the tackle. Still rolling over on the far side. He's hit inside the 30 at the 28. Martinez lets this one go. Second interception of the night. This time, it's Miles Brooks. Hendrickson and, and deep right, in Westwood territory once again. Again, we said it all night, but right there, uh, it was another miscommunication. Mazzola is is taking the inside route there um, and then just slips going out, try, trying to cut towards the post route, and and Martinez throws what he thinks is going to be the back shoulder towards the sideline um, pass and just a really easy interception there for the DB who runs all the way back across the field and ends up getting an extra 20 yards out of it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So here comes Henderson back out. They'll go left to right. Ball on the far side, hash mark. 4.40 to go in the first half. First half for Hendrickson. They give it to the fullback, big number 31, rumbling, stumbling, bumbling all the way down to the 20. That'll be a first down. Big guy, Dre Conley. And we got a warrior down. Oh, that's that's not that's not what you want to see. Okay, right there, getting back up. That is uh, big big 4-4 four, four right there. Can't. Can't have him staying down. Luckily, he's back up and walking around. But the, right there, big 31, I mean, that is a large uh, fullback, and he just wasn't going to go down there. It's going to take more than one guy to bring him down, and uh, he showed you right there that he's got, he's got good vision and balance right there to get an extra few yards. I'd probably call that man sir. Clock rolling, 4.07 <laughs> to go. Here is Jackson bouncing to the outside, the 15 down to the 10. He will against the grain. I'm speechless. Down to the nine, the five-yard line, finally driven out of bounds. Connor Cooper leads the charge 
for Timion Jackson, he'd been off of the field most of the second quarter, comes in the fresh legs, you see it right there. Oh, and he just gets the ball to the outside, uh, takes a cut through the hole, and then it looked like he literally stopped and was just jumping back and forth for a couple of, for a couple of seconds, and then found another hole, popped through it, got an extra four yards down to the five-yard line. Damon Harris checks out of the game for Westwood. And again, you see him, Stephen, hands on the hips. This, this defense is exhausted. Absolutely. You've got to give him a little bit of help. First and goal, ball at the five. On the give, the big fullback hit immediately. Nice play. Great stop by Westwood. That's Josh Shupin on the stop. And that is, uh, goes against exactly what I said earlier. <laughs> One guy brought him down, but... Um, that was big guy on big guy action there, and uh, a good, good tackle, uh, touchdown saving tackle, in fact, from um, big number fifty one there, Josh Shoop. Shoop. Lucio stays in, big fullback Drake Conley. Timmy on Jackson stands in the I formation. Second down and goal from the three. Give it to the big man, the fullback. He's going. He's still going. Might have crossed the plane. They'll spot him at the one. Somebody loses a lid back there. And Rodney, I'm going to go since uh, we're looking at third down and an inch. I think I could make this next play call for the Hendrickson Hawks, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably so. Here's Harris back in. Saw Harris. We've seen him off the field a couple of times. Kind of holding the back of the thigh. But again, these guys, I'm surprised they're not all cramping as much as they've been on the field. Here's a third down and goal into the end zone. Standing up this time, Drake Conley. <laughs> And it was a little bit of miscommunication on the defense there. It didn't look like the whole uh, front seven was set for the Warriors there. And just a quick snap from the Hawks. And he, big 31, just walks into the end zone, Dre Conley. And they, yeah. have, they have him listed here as a running back. I'm going to go with fullback on that one. <laughs> well, I was thinking tackle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that works too. Kick oh, he, he got, got one. It. He got one. There you go. He finally does get through. There's your highlight so far. Demetrius Jones, we called it. Hey, finally. Finally he got one, and uh, he was right there all up in the grill, the kicker. And uh, he's, got, he's got the feel for the timing now after getting one. I feel like that may be the, the first of many this season we see from Demetrius Jones. Absolutely. As he gets uh, some congratulations and some taps on the, on the hat there from his team. 3.02 to go in the first half. Knee score, Hendrickson 51. Westwood nothing. Hey, that got the Westwood folks excited. Hell, that got us excited. That got us Heck, excited. that got us excited. Photography by Jenny Ray. Small town business in the big city. Jenny opened her first studio over 14 years ago. Offers clients an exceptional portrait experience for many years. Jenny's been around the Westwood program as long as I have been. Much longer. Family portraits, school photos, senior pictures. Doesn't matter. The Westwood community, we love her dearly. Her studio's right here in the Westwood neighborhood. Don't hesitate to call her. She wants to be your photographer. Jenny's photographs of the team and individual pictures are always available. You can find them at JennyRay.com. Game day images are uploaded within 48 hours, so check back early and often to find great images of your athletes. JennyRay.com, longtime and continued supporter of Warrior football. You can catch all of those Warrior sponsors, and if you'd like to be one, the official website of Westwood Warrior Sports is warriorsports.org. 3.02 to go. A nice three-minute drive right now, resulting in seven points would be exceptional. Would just absolutely be fantastic. Fair catch call there at the 18 by Robbie Jing. They'll set it down to be first down at the 25. We talked about this Hendrickson team. A lot of do some, do some things better in the second half coming up and, and really give yourself some good things to look at going into your into your second district game because Hendrickson has just been clicking on yeah. every single cylinder tonight. Yeah. This this is tough. This is a tough team to match up against. Here's Martinez throwing the deep ball here to the near side, looking for Lyndon Jones, diving effort incomplete. Had a step on the defender as he had gotten just ahead of Tyler Chris. Just a little long. Just a little too long, but finally on these deep balls, we got the correct play call and the communication between Martinez and his receiver. And you see there, whenever that happens, I mean, he had uh, two and a half steps on, on the DB, and if, if Martinez just puts a little bit less underneath that ball, he catches it, maybe turns on the switch and breaks it away for a touchdown. Uh, well, either way, if you complete that pass, you're getting to the other side of the 50-yard right. line. Right, right. 
Clock stops, 2.30 to go. Third down and 10 from the 25. Here's Martinez. Two receivers to the near side. Bubble screen. Johnson, nice job to grab that. Or Jones, pardon me. Nice job to grab that. A little high goes right to the ground. And it'll bring up fourth down for Westwood. Or is it third? Might have missed it down there. Yeah, fourth down. Fourth down coming up. Fourth and 13. And Robbie Jing will come out to punt it away once again. And that defense has to be thinking, man, just needed a first down there. That defense is thinking two minutes and we get to go sit for 15. Yeah. Can't like, take a deep breath because it has been it has been rough, rough sledding here today for the Westwood defense. Yeah, it's like they're like, oh, nice job by Jing to one hand that thing down. Takes a nice Westwood roll. This is going to pin Hendrickson as far back as I think they've been tonight. This one goes down at the 37 and a half yard line. Play of the night may have just been, other than the blocked extra point, Robbie Jing palmed that ball. One handed it out <laughs> of the air. I mean, that just, that just would have been completely indicative of the entirety of the game that we've seen if that goes over his head for a safety into the end zone because it's just been everything that, that could possibly have gone wrong for this Westwood squad has gone wrong. Luckily, Jing was able to get up and grab the ball and get the punt away there and save the safety. So, um, absolutely yeah. play the, yeah. play the right game there. right there. Right there, all the way. Motion man across, first and ten going left to right. Running the sweep to the far side, turning upfield at the 35. Vicente Ochoa, great play as he stops Terrence Walker. Walker was trying to turn upfield. Big Vicente Ochoa drags him down by the trousers. Best tackle of the night that we've seen so far from the Westwood defense. Great pursuit, um, great great way of setting the edge and, and pushing, pushing the jet sweep all the way to the sideline. Again, using that sideline as a 12th defender and uh, bringing him down for about a gain of a yard maybe. Mm -hmm. Second down and nine from the 38. Here is the give this time. There's some running room at midfield. Breaks a tackle. The 45, the 40. Finally dropped inside the 40 at the 37-yard line. This time it's Donnie Newsom. We talked about Newsom as more of the ground and pound. Saw a good burst right there. He definitely got some speed behind him, but he had to use that ground and pound to get through the, set, the, the first level of the defense and get into that secondary. Now, the one thing you can't do is give up seven more points here heading into the first half. Yeah, line of scrimmage of Westwood 37. Here is Newsom. He's got running room once again, bounces to the right side, still traveling inside the red zone down to the 18-yard line. 20 yards, make it 21. Clock rolling or clock stops now as a chain gang can't keep up. Now it rolls, 24 seconds. They actually started the clock for their set. And, and we're going to, yeah. Timeout called by Hendrickson. So they'll. No, I. Oh, I, they're just going to let this run? Yeah. Yeah, they're just going to let it run into halftime. Okay, pardon me. Westwood was still on the field. That's what's happening. The final seconds ticking off here in the first half. <laughs> Whew. Talk about night and day, what we saw the first part of the season as to what we've seen here in the first half of the district opener on, on senior night. Rough start. Still a half to go, though. You never say never. You never say never. Absolutely. That's why they play the games. You know, if 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 you if you, if there was never a chance, they would just look at a piece of paper and who's got the better stats, and that's who'd win the game. But um, you play them all the way through. And Rodney, what what is the message that Coach Wood is giving to his players right now? Obviously, the mood in that locker room is going to be very. Uh, down. <laughs> this is a G-rated program. Right? Yes, no, it's, <laughs> it's going to be very down. No. And um, but you've got to be able to keep your kids inspired and, and have them go out there and, and play the second half. Because whenever you do get lazy or tired out there on, on the field and you're not playing good, sound, fundamental football, that's when you start to see um, some injuries or, or things pop up that you really never want to see on the field right, so so right. what 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 is coach wood's message here do you think to these kids in the locker room right now at this point what he's going to do he's going to remind them who they're playing because you can't you, 
if you're the Westwood team, you cannot get down on yourself because, and it's not, and it's not being inferior. It's nothing of that. The experience, the factor of Hendrickson, and just just the athletes, and and you know, Westwood graduated 20 some odd seniors last year, and is having to rebuild and and reload. Hendrickson is not doing that. <laughs> Hendrickson is still very much intact. He's going to remind him about that. He's going to remind him to have fun, and he's good. That is the thing. What what we'll see here in the second half is. Um, you got you to keep your guys that you really need. You got to keep them upright, and you got to keep them healthy. Because this is just one game. This is just one game. So it looks like we will actually get ready to go down to the field, the Westwood Warrior Band. The Sundancers are down there. Let's go down for our halftime performance.
class of 1990. Meredith Jones, class of 1998. Julie LaRocca, class of 2006. Martin LaRocca, class of 2009. Elsie Kim, class of 2010. Luigi Kim, class of 2014. From class of 2017, Cameron Adams and Louis Maggie Lupo. And from class of 18, 2018, Lumsey Nathan and James Jam. Also with us is our first band director, who is integral in the development of the Warrior Band. Please welcome back, Mr. Bob Dalrymple. Also, we want to give a special shout out to Mr. Vic Garcia, 83 years young, who drove the equipment truck and service to the Westwood Band for nearly 15 years. And now, please join the Warrior Band and the Warrior Alumni Band, his retired director of bands, Jack Green, and current director of bands, Thomas Turpin, conduct the Westwood Alma Mater and the Westwood Fight Song.
Warrior Band, the best of the West. So a nice performance, alumni band, just, just a really cool thing on senior night. Yeah, the Westwood Warrior Band there and the Sun Dancers on a special night. Game not quite going in the right direction, but that's the nice thing about this. Doc, Dr. Sankow back there twisting and tweaking the dials. And whispering, too. And whispering. He's the, he's the Westwood Whisperer. <laughs> and uh, Steven, nice. Steven Kabler, Rodney Rodriguez, with you. And it has just been... We were talking off the air, and I think we all thought, you know, the, the field goal starts off with a 25-yard uh, field goal from Skiles. We thought, this is going to be pretty good. This is going to be good. You hold them, they're down to your two, and you hold them to a field goal, um, and you think, you know, we're right here in this game, and then you turn around and you blink, and it's halftime, and it's <laughs> 51 to nothing. Yeah. Yeah, t tough sledding for the, for the Warriors tonight, and... And again, you, you use this as a learning experience. We watched Westwood last year and, and the scenario with Westwood last year, back into the playoffs, but Sang will, will remember this. There were, there were some really nice wins in there, but again, there were some, there were some losses in there that were uh, pretty rough, but they always seem to bounce back nicely. You know, it, it gets, to a, gets to a certain point where at this point you'll probably, for Westwood, you, 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 try, to, you try to stay healthy, keep, keep everybody upright, Heck, you may get out there and, and work on your depth a little bit. I mean, if you've got guys that you've been wanting to get on the field on Friday night, you, great test right here. Get them out there and, and give them a shot. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. The only uh, thing I would say about that is maybe see some uh, some good things out of your ones right. first right. against this high-level competition and then be like, okay, we want to keep keep everybody safe and, 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 and not in uh, – you know, not in harm's way. So let's put some, let's see what we got it out of our, our twos, threes, and fours maybe. But before you take those ones out, you've got to at least let them yeah. have something that Positive. they can hang their hat on and say, you know, we, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, when it comes to watch film, they can look at it and be like, well, we at least, you know, second sure. half came out Absolutely. and did this. Right. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you go back and look at this first half tape, I there's yeah. three or four Bright spots, two of them on the special team side. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, we thought we were going to have uh, Leslie Wellens uh, up here at the half. She, of course, uh, the, one of the proprietors there with uh, Fabulous Affairs Catering, fabulousaffairscatering.com, just great food. I mean, exquisite food. The coordination is just unbelievable. Service is amazing. Check it out, fabulousaffairscatering.com. Dot com. Leslie's been at this for a long time. Great chef there. Of course, they've got Ian Cox. Ian, Ian Cox is their senior that's out there playing. But check them out. They're a proud sponsor of Westwood Football. Fabulous Affairs Catering. Uh, we haven't seen Leslie. Hopefully, we are able to get her up here uh, at some point because uh, for our sponsor spotlight. So thanks so much, uh, Fabulous Affairs Catering. Also want to recognize a few uh, special folks and, and remind you, if you are interested in being a part of the uh, sponsor, business sponsor for the Westwood program, Contact the Booster Club, 
warriorsports.org. They'll get you pointed in the right direction. They've got several different levels of sponsorship there, and they can set you right up. And a big thanks. 81 families so far that have joined the Booster Club this season. You can still join that to Allison Pasternak and Lori Ryan for chairing that Luau committee. That was just a few weeks ago before the season started and raised a great amount of money for the Booster Club. Special volunteer recognition this week goes to Mark and Teresa Tungate for their varsity team dinner, hosting, uh, uh, hosting that team dinner, and Trish Hoover, who coordinates the locker room decorations and volunteers that uh, all of that decoration that happens every week is chaired by Trish Hoover. So thanks to those great folks, part of the Westwood Football Booster Club. Again, those special events coming up October 5th, parking lot party over at Westwood High after the game. There'll be a DJ, food, all kinds of fun stuff to celebrate there. And then Spirit Night at Whataburger, 620 and 183. Great Whataburger meal, 35 to 6. Liberty Hill on top of Maynard in the third quarter. That's a 14 to 6 score. Austin High bouncing back nicely after losing to these Warriors last week. That's 27 to 7 as they lead over Lehman. 25-6A, maybe the game of the week we thought it would be. Well, it's not really shaping up that way. Over at Burger Stadium, Lake Travis 42, Bowie 7. Just all over them right now. Yeah. And uh, that Lake Travis team looks looks real strong coming out of 25-6A over yeah, there. Yeah, they do. Over in San Antonio, this is a great game right here. This, this matchup between the Reagan Rattlers and the Clemens Buffaloes, 17-14 to halftime score, Reagan on top. That's a couple of teams right there that are on the brink of doing something really, really good. And one of them, if not both, could do it. Uh, a lot of folks talk about Reagan, real complete program there with Reagan. We'll be tracking that throughout the season. Over at Lockhart, homecoming for the Lions, they lead Burnett. Uh, with about a minute left in the quarter there, or in the half. 17 to 14 is the score there. Your Wimberley Texans. This game is available on KMAC Sports, by the way. It is indeed. I've got it pulled up on the computer. 13 to 7 there. Your, your thoughts on the Texans. I actually did, I did, a, show, I did a show with Mike Blackwell. He's the voice of, of Wimberley football. And you guys, you guys over in Wimberley, you're just not used to losing football games. No, really, um, really pride pride ourselves over there on a, a stout defense and a, and a good running game that it, that is really hard to stop obviously um last week uh the Wimberley game looked a little bit uh, like we have here tonight <laughs> yeah. at kelly reeves but uh 63 13 there to giddings um and you just kind of listen around uh, some of those talking heads and they were just as surprised as as everyone was that Giddings was able to do that uh, last week. But they are tonight also opening up uh, district play, I believe, with Canyon Lake. Uh, they're in Canyon Lake. Um, I haven't actually got to see a whole lot of, of Wimberley um, or gone gotten around to talk to some of the coaches there. Um, I do know all of the coaches out there and, uh -huh. and talk to them pretty frequently about about the team and what they're thinking the last time I, I talked to to coach warren out there uh they were still in two days and he was happy with the with how they were progressing but um really haven't haven't got a whole lot of time to look into it um but from what i understand they have a pretty good team um and they've got a real stout defense obviously that uh, that getting getting side looks really really yeah, good too yeah. F five team district for wimberley there so you know something we were talking about the other night they're going to get in the playoffs, but right. Whatever uh, you, you got to beat out one other one yeah, other team. That's yeah. a little different here than that. Yeah. Than the nine than the nine team yeah. district we have over here. So a yeah. little bit of a little bit of a transition there, but uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. Uh, speaking of Giddings, and speaking of our booth, Giddings leads Taylor. That's a halftime score. That's uh, the home of Dr. San Cow. Twenty-four to seven at the Duck Pond over in Taylor. Your score there. The duck Pond. San Antonio area once again. Cibolo Steel on top of Churchill, 23 to nothing. I had that pinned as the game of the week. I guess I missed that one also. Georgetown over South San Antonio, 31 to 12. Temple leads Harker Heights, 35 to nothing. Other action. Lago Vista over Comfort, 35 to six is your score in that one. Mason over Sonora, 14 to nothing. Breezing through here. Don't see anything else that's jumping out at me. Trying to look for something that may surprise us. Tell you what did surprise me last night was that Glenn High School team. They beat McCallum 30 to 26. So a big win there for Glenn as we get ready for second half action here from the Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex. 51 to nothing. The score. Hendrickson on top. And again, I just got a 
as I'm still, you know, you talk about you with Wimberley, I'm still very much in the scope of Lockhart over there, and one of my ex-coaches keeps me informed and says 17 to 14 at the half there for Lockhart. So thanks to Coach Amado Galvez for checking in and keeping, keeping me in the loop. So Westwood will kick off here. Now Hendrickson will get the ball. So maybe one of our... Uh one of our teams can get a dub. Maybe, maybe we're, we're counting on uh, Lockhart there to get the W <laughs> tonight because they're the only ones that seem to be well, winning of, they, of they, us. They were they were all over Taylor last week and lost by a point. So, uh, well, there you go. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. So here comes Hendrickson back out. And again, you got to hand it to, and, and it's really cool here here at, at Kelly Reeves. You've got you've got the Westwood faithful here. The tribe is still here. They still haven't sat down. You would you would look at the tribe over there and you would think that Westwood was ahead by this score. Oh yeah, big shout out to uh, to all those students to come here and, and cheer their team on through the good the first two games and the not so good here that we've had uh, in game three, but. They're always enthusiastic, always out there supporting their squad. And Absolutely. It's, it's really, really cool to see. Excuse me. So we get our first look at Cactus Jack Elliott tonight for the second half kickoff. And he kicks this one, kicks it short. It's taken at the 32-yard line. Big hit. Nice special teams play with a stick from Nathan Potter. But as has been the case, he didn't go right down. No, it was Adam Cousins. He did not go right down, and so hold on, we've got a. That's Cam Colvin down here on the Westwood sideline. He was, he was in the meat of all of that action. Potter applied the hit. Colvin's still on the ground, so they will tend to him over on the sideline. But yeah, he, he did not go down. Just kept on trucking. And and what it leads to is again, decent if not great field position at the at their own 42 yard line and in the short field to yeah really keep their momentum going um let's let's see if, if this defense kind of maybe made some adjustments switch some things up and uh, can get a, a few more stops here in the second half um they look like they're they're together they look like they're coming out ready to play and um I think we got, yeah, we got Colvin up walking. Slight limp back to the tent, but uh, he is walking on his own, which is always good to see. Indeed, and you, and you have to think for this defense, they're breathing a little easy right now. They, they did get that much-needed break. Going left to right, and it's Barker back in the game. He will, Jackson on the far side, hands off, big hit. Nice hit to start the second half. That's Connor Cooper. Cooper lays out Timmy on Jackson as he tries to get to the outside edge after a five-yard game. After a five-yard game, but, you know, they, it's it's a good sign from this defense that, that they're flying to the ball and still willing to, to make good, good solid contact to bring bring down uh, – bring down – Yeah, Jackson. Jackson, sorry. I couldn't no, that's his name right. here on the, that is on all the sheet. Right. There's so many of them. Trips to the near side, pitching it, trying to turn. Here's Ethan Brown in on the hit at the 50 to the Westwood side of the field. He just won't yeah. go down, yeah. like we yeah. said. All the way down to the 46. In a very slow pile, very slow moving pile right there as Brown jumps on, but just keeps going. Now they're first down, and that's one thing that they've been able to do that Westwood hasn't quite been able to do is get those first downs and move the chains. I mean, yep. how many, how many, we've had two first downs tonight? I believe so, I believe so. Trips to the near side, single receiver to the far side, out of the eye formation. Here is Barker. Swings it out, wide open on the far side at the 40, the 35. Breaks tackle from Hoover, finding the far sideline. One man to beat into the end zone, easily 46 yards. Touchdown, Hendrickson. This time it's Terrence Walker. And you got, you've got trips down to the near side, one-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside, and you just throw the quick screen and let your receiver do the rest. And that just that just goes down to the team speed that we talked about. The receivers here for Hendrickson, just that much faster. And when you don't, when you aren't able to wrap up and make the first first tackle there, when you have trips to the, to the opposite side, there's nobody there with safety help over the top or anything. Mahoney sets it down, Skiles kick, no good. Just a little short. Blocked extra point the last time, missed extra point this time. 
10.39 to go here in the third quarter. Just underway, Hendrickson 57. Westwood nothing here in the third quarter. Here from Kelly Reeves. Whataburger fans, if you feel like your breakfast routine could use a bold kick, got some sizzling news for you. Chorizo taquito with cheese is back, featuring perfectly seasoned chorizo. This bold taquito also has fresh scrambled eggs, a slice of American cheese, all wrapped up in a warm tortilla. Now, if you've already tried this one, you know how seriously good it is. If you haven't, trust us when we tell you that it's time to try it. So stop by between 11 p.m. and 11 a.m. to get yourself a delicious chorizo taquito with cheese before a limited time. And of course, a Whataburger of choice for Westwood fans. 620 and Lake Creek Parkway. What's your favorite thing on the Whataburger menu? You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a double meat with cheese guy. I'm pretty simple. Double meat with cheese, but I like a lot of onions in there. Okay. I like, like a lot of onions in there. What a size, of course. What a size. It what gotta a size. do it. Gotta do it. They, what a size. they have. They got some great fries, and uh, I usually just stick to the chicken tenders there, man. Can't nice. beat them. Can't beat them. Classic. More of a, yeah, more of a onion rings kind of guy. Okay. Oh, yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Can't, can't go wrong with that. We might have to go hit the 620 in Lake Creek of Whataburger on the way out. It's right down the road. I, I passed it on the way here. Yeah. Right. Have to go check it out. Here's the kickoff. This one will be taken at the 16, fair caught by... Anderson, they'll set it at the 25. We'll see the Westwood offense for the first time here in the second half. And the men in orange desperately need something good to happen. Just something to hang your hat on for this game. And whether it be a long run where you see your offensive line finally get a good push or a, a pass or a couple of passes for 15, 20, 30 yards, just something that you can look back on and be like, look, we, this is what we did against this caliber of a team. We can do this against everybody else. Westwood doing the old playground move right there. Hendrickson wasn't quite ready. Hand it off to Debs. And he runs it right up the gut down to the 35-yard gain on first down. Just Gotta like that. They weren't set. Sorry. Burning and churning those legs. Keep it moving to get a get five yards there. And that's that's something that they haven't been able to do all night. Stay in front of the sticks. They've been first down has been one, two yards. Um, but right there, that's what you want. Two receivers to each side here for Martinez. Second and five from the 30. Swings it out. I think this was whistled dead right about the time that Lyndon Jones caught that. No, play went far. Swore a horror. Well, yeah, penalty marker over on the far side on the 30. False start, the call against Westwood. And just when you do something that you think is positive, you turn around and kick yourself in the, in the rear end and Start right back there, second and 10, right behind the chains. Yeah, right back to the 25. 9.59 here in the third. It's been Hendrickson all the way here on senior night. Two receivers split to each side, single back in the backfield. That's Deb standing to the right of R.J. Martinez. R.J. takes a snap. Here is Lyndon Jones, hauls it in at the 25, finds some running room here on the near sideline. Driven out of bounds about the 34. We'll actually spot him at the 32. There He'll be short go. of the first down. Short of the first down, but not by much. Only need three or four more yards. Oh, they backed him up a couple more, so about five. Yep. <laughs> Third and three, officially on the board. Here's Martinez, boy, for a first down. Here's Jones, same play to Great the near block. side. Great block. Big running room, penalty marker on the near sideline, driven out of bounds to the 42-yard line. Lyndon Jones, a couple of penalty markers on the big hitting play for Westwood. We'll have to check the foul. And here comes the call. Are they going to get a... It might have been an illegal block. Another huddle. Chop block. Or hitting below the knee, or whatever we call it. Looked like a good block to me. Boy, and this is just here on this drive. We're seeing little shades of of some energy, but it's quickly followed by a negative. This is a big one, too. That is a big one, because now you go from third and three to third and 12. <laughs> yeah. Third and Zeta, well, no, not Zetejas, it's closed. We noticed on the <laughs> way up here. 9.13 to go. And here's a third down play coming up for the Warriors. 
Two receivers split to each side. Single back in the backfield now is Anderson. He stands to the right of Martinez. 14 on the play clock. Here's RJ. Three-step drop. He's got Linden out to this way. Martinez breaking free. Gets a big block from Jing. Spins. Breaks a tackle at the 30. Falls to the 32. He got a really nice block from that Robbie Jing to spring it. Monster block there. Yeah, it was. Uh, pursuit by the linebacker. He just didn't see Jing coming, coming across the field. And Jing just put it on him. Jing will drop back to punt it away. Busy night for him tonight back there as punter. Yeah, he is. Very busy night. Maurice Thompson drops back. Yet a different returner. Oh, these guys are just rolling them out. They, yeah, it just seems it's, it's next man up for them, man. Here's Jing. Gets off a nice kick. This one heading towards the Hendrickson sideline. It'll go out of bounds there. And just shy of the midfield stripe, it'll be first down for the Hawks. 8.08 to go in the third. They lead 57 to nothing here over Westwood. And the deep. And we say big, but he's got some speed. He's darted out for 13 yards. And the foul against Westwood, they'll add a little more to it. When you're hot, you're hot. Uh, yeah. When you're hot, you're hot. That's the, way to, that's the way to put it for sure, Rodney. I don't, I don't know... What they call they call it a personal foul. Roughing, roughing the passer is what they called, or mm -hmm. roughing the quarterback. I didn't. I don't really know. Yeah, I didn't not exactly sure what they running were running play. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, did he just? I guess he must have made helmet to helmet contact with him after yeah. he handed the ball off. Had to have been. First and ten from the Westwood fourteen here for Hendrickson. Out of the shotgun, Lucio, motion man across, running the jet sweep right up the gut for a gain of a couple, down to the 12, two-yard gain. And it seems like every even, even whenever it looks like the defense makes a good play and gets a stop, they're still getting two and three yards. Yeah. There's, there's, it's, I thought for, for sure that they, that was going to be a, a, a no gain or a loss of one and then falls forward and gets two or three extra. Yep. Xavier Lucio, the quarterback, out of the eye formation behind him is Conley. Trips to the far side, single receiver to the near side. Left tackle might have moved there a little bit. The guard. And Defensive line shift there. Uh, got the, got the O-line to jump there. Um, that'll help a little bit. You know, maybe they can uh, stop him here, and then uh, old Demetrius Jones can, can get a chance of blocking another, another kick here. Keep, keep points off the board. That's it. Clock rolling. 7.13 to go in the third. I formation. Here's Lucio. Rolling to the far side on the keeper. Goes out of bounds at the 15. Nice job coming across the field there by Cooper. Yeah, excellent pursuit of the ball right there. It looked like Lucio was going to be able to get the edge and just turn the corner and run down the sideline like they've been doing all night. But Connor... Connor said, nope on that one, I'm, I'm tackling you, and he made a great play there, shove him out of bounds, bring up a third and long here for these Hawks. Clock stops with seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. Lucio stays on the field. Dre Conley with him, senior running back. Also the tight end, Landon Botkin in the ball game. Two receivers to the near side, single receiver to the far side. Now Botkin in the backfield with Conley and Lucio. And it's to give to Conley. He runs into Botkin, but bounces off him. He breaks a tackle at the 10, finds the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Hendrickson. Conley, 14 thing. Hendrickson up on top. Got to tell you, friends, about Ed Lundry, fellow real estate agent. Proud, he, now, this guy has been another Westwood supporter for many years. Ed Lundry, Big Ed, offers full staging service, includes evaluating the home, advising sellers what improvements can be done to get the highest selling price in the shortest time. He has a vast list of vendors and trades who can do the work at a reasonable price. He's a certified negotiations expert, accredited luxury home specialist, certified staging professional. For the last 20 years, Ed's been one of the top 300 realtors in Austin and in total sales each year. On top of that, I mean, check him out at familymattersteam.com. Ed's son played football for Westwood. He has a daughter that graduated from Westwood while he helps his clients all over the area. He does a lot with Westwood. Uh, you'll find popular pages on, on his site. 
uh, from game 300, 400 photos. You can download those for free. He shoots those photos here at the game. So great dude. I know Ed personally. He's, a, like I said, a fellow real estate professional. He's a good dude. The FamilyMattersTeam.com. Ed Lundry and Ed Lundry Real Estate, another proud sponsor of Westwood football. 6.52 to go here in the third as Skiles will kick it off. And here's a kick. This one sails and taken at the 22, trying to set up a return, but nothing there. A little trouble there as Kubelka, Joseph Kubelka takes it at the 22, a little off balance. Lucky held on to that. Yes, very lucky. And uh, I think it was one of those where they kicked it short and uh, Nate Anderson, who's been calling those fair catches all night because he, he's, he knows what the game plan is. Um, they kick it short to a new to a new player who doesn't necessarily know that that's, that's the game right. plan. So he catches it, thinks the play is just going to stop, and then essentially has to duck and dive to save, to save yeah. every limb that he's got because he was about to get yeah, he was. laid out out there. They was a coming. Penalty marker as Robbie Jing tries to get off the field. A little formation trouble here. Is this one an illegal substitution yeah, there for that's Westwood? What it was. <sighs> Just not starting off the drives the right way. Here's nothing, Jane. nothing really going right here no. tonight. And and this is one of those you just gotta crinkle up the piece of paper and throw it in the trash can yep. and put it as far behind you as you can. Burn the film. Two receivers each side. Here's Anderson in motion. Right up the middle on the misdirection. Mario Debs got some running room. The 40, the 45 at midfield brought down from behind. Big play from Mario Debs. A little spark plug. This was what offense needed. Cavazos chases him down. And who else is it going to be on the first big play that we see, or the first anything play that we see from this uh, Westwood offense, of course, is the, the stalwart senior there, Mario Debs. All the way down to the Hendrickson 49, biggest play of the night for Westwood. And the second time this evening that they've been on the uh, opponent side of the 50, which we like to see. They're barely there. They're on the dance floor, but they can barely hear the music. That's exactly right. Two receivers to each side. Single back of the backfield is Anderson. Motion across is Debs. They fake it. Now this time Anderson up the gut. He's got some room down to the 41-yard line. Eight yards, Nate Anderson. And that was the exact same play that they ran. Different dude. Different guy. They just swapped their motion man and the handoff man with Debs and Anderson back and forth. They should just have been running that play all night because it seems to be working a little bit. That one is working. Second down and two. Here's Martinez, swings it out. Lyndon Jones, he's got running room. Big shot. He laid a guy out right there at the 36. That's Falls down to the 34. First down. Absolutely. Got a nice block from Ian Cox. And Westwood moves the sticks. As my man says, clock stops 536. Here in the backfield, he now goes in motion to the right side. Martinez, five-step drop. Throws it over the middle. Nice Hegde grab at the 25. He's dropped at the 22. Big hit. He paid the price. Tyler Chris. Doesn't matter. Mohan Hegde moves the chains. And just like that, they have more first downs on this drive than they've had all game. So this is exactly what we were talking That's about. Right. A good, long, sustained drive to give your, your offense some confidence. Um, finishing out this game and then going into next week. Indeed. 13 yards. Martinez to Mohan Hegde here in the third quarter. Here's Westwood, another first down. Line of scrimmage at 22. Deepest penetration here so far for Westwood tonight. Two receivers to each side, single back in the backfield. That's Anderson. Here's Martinez, plants, looking. He's got some time. This one complete at the 12, the five-yard line all the way down. Nate Anderson, another first down into the red zone, deep into the red zone. That's that's more like it right there. That's what, uh, And Anderson coming out of the backfield, sitting down just in the zone coverage right there. Martinez finds him, puts him right on the money. Excuse me, that was more of a wheel route. Yeah. Uh, they're out of the backfield and um, picks up another first down. First and goal. Hegde and Jing to the far side. Lyndon Jones split out here to the near side. Anderson in the backfield. Here's Martinez out of the pistol. Motion across. Here's Lyndon Jones. Hands it off right up the gut. Jones at the two. He pays the price there. But he does get three yards. First got the ball at the beginning of the game. Jones to the near side. Here's Martinez. He'll take it. He'll run off right guard into the end zone. 
three yard plunge. Touchdown, Westwood. No goose egg on the board tonight, boys. No, no sir. Hey, we get to see That's Big it. 19, Mr. Right. Cactus Jack. And he's a senior himself, so Cactus Jack will get an extra point opportunity here in the third. Jing will set it down. Good snap, the hold, and he stays perfect on the year. Westwood on the board. 52 to go here in the third quarter. From the reservation, Hendrickson 64, Westwood 7. Westwood football continues in just a moment. And now, a KMAC Sports Classic. At KMAC Sports, we want to make sure you get the whole game. So we'll take a moment here to clean your speakers. Ah. Clean Sonic Delivery. This is KMAC Sports. Miss the big play of the game, or maybe you just didn't make it home in time. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Check out the audio archives page on the KMAC Sports homepage where you can catch up with your favorite teams. It's all right there for you at KMACSports.com where we're bringing your teams to you. Back at the reservation, 64 to 7, Westwood on the board. Elsewhere in 13-6A, kind of the, kind of the tone of the night. Not quite this bad everywhere else, but over at Dragon, McNeil leads Vista Ridge 35 to 14. Vista Ridge next on the menu for Westwood. That'll be next week over at Gupton. Stony Point on top of Leander. That's a 26 to six ball game. And Vandy has scored. 7.43 to go in the contest there. It's a 14 to seven game with Cedar Ridge. That one's got overtime written all over it. As it should. As it should. Yeah, that's gonna. we said it was going to be a good game tonight and took a little bit for Vandy to score there, but their defense kept them in the game, it seems like, obviously, for only giving up 14 points. Cactus Jack Mart or Cactus Jack Martinez. Cactus Jack Elliott to kick it off. This one high and short, taken at the 30. Coverage team there, but there's a gaping hole all the way down inside the 45 to the 46 yard line. And there you see the burst from Tyler Chris. Nice touchdown saving tackle from Cooper. Yeah, he was almost gone. Uh, good, good tackle by Cooper there just to, just to barely bring him down because if Cooper's not there, it's six more. Than yeah. An unnecessarily needed six more points. Yeah. Yeah, at this point. Let's just keep it right about here. And, and for Westwood, you, you need that you need to get points on the board. Yes. And especially in that fashion. That was a nice drive. Good drive. Keep the offense moving. Build some confidence. Um, and just continue to, you know, put some more points on the board. Get some, get some better film to look at before going into next week. Yeah, that's for sure. Here's Lucio back out at quarterback. Third one that we've seen here for Chip Killian's squad tonight. Two receivers to the near side. They go left to right, hand off, and it's Conley, the big man. And it's a fumble on the play. Recovered by Westwood, coming out of the pile. Cam Colvin just took it away from him. And that's that's uh, that's something you need. That uh, turnover right there. Like I said earlier, you got to flip the field position. Well, that'll do it right there. Big fumble recovery. Let's try and get some more points on the board. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The comeback is on. The comeback is on. 2.40 left to go. <laughs> That's right. Down by a lot. Yeah. I can't do that quick we, math, we, but we have to, to seven. We have to broadcast this really nice because if that really happened, we would be stars. Yes, absolutely. We would, be, we would be on every media outlet you could think of if that happened. 2.40 to go into third. They go right to left. Quarterback change for Westwood. And awaiting the snap. Two receivers to each side. Single back in the backfield. And swing pass complete. Here's Jones once again. Stopped just shy of midfield. As I believe this is Tavon Owsley. Saw Owsley against, was that Eastview? Yes. Yes, we did see a little bit of him against Eastview. Uh, really liked what he was doing back there, making good throws. Uh, his ball looked nice. Uh, just making, you know, made the right decisions. It's, it's, it's not a bad guy to have yeah. at, at the back of yeah. the spot. And a senior. Yes. Two receivers to each side. Here's Anderson in motion. Owsley will take the snap, and he's got running room right up the gut to the 40, all the way down to the 39-yard line. Tavon lowers his shoulder and buries a defender. First down. 
First down. Got to enjoy the first downs. And the big hole opens up. That was a good play action on the jet sweep and uh, run all the way. Run is design quarterback run. Good hole, good run, good moves. Here's Owsley, empty backfield, trips to the far side, two receivers to the near side. He will take it himself, running off a left guard, bounces all the way down to the 36. He kind of looks like Tyrone Swoops back there. He's got the Swoops number on. Oh, yeah, back there running the ball. Um, this is another thing that I have to say is I don't, I don't necessarily know why they weren't going more quarterback run to start this game. Um, we've seen R.J. Martinez really – really tear through some defenses earlier on this season, um, adding that extra element of running into the playbook. Julian DeBerry in the ball game. He lines up to the near side with Hegde, single receiver to the far side. Rolling this direction, looking. Here's Owsley throwing the deep ball, wide open. Hegde a little high. He was wide open at the 10. Just a little high. May have rushed the throw a little bit. There was some pressure coming after him. Um, he had he had Hegde wide open, but uh, heck of an effort by Hegde over there to even try and bring that ball in because he was he was doing the old toe tap. He was making sure he had his yeah, feet in bounds just in case he did end up coming down with that ball. Also in the ball game over on the far side, Oliver Yu. Yu the junior, he wears 82. You in 82. There we go. There you go. Third down and seven from the 36. Here's Tavon Owsley. Drops back, looking, throwing across the field. Ian Cox almost with a circus grab. That was a nice pass. That was pretty right up the that middle. Right. Nice. Hit, hit Cox right in the hands, and that's one he's going to want back um, as a senior tonight coming out, trying to get a catch in the game, um, and just uh, unable to haul it in, unfortunately. It's been a good drive here for Owsley. Like what he's doing here. I, I couldn't agree more with you. I really like that they were they were bringing in the, the quarterback run scheme, and, and we've seen a couple of good balls from Owsley, just unable to, his receivers unable to bring him in. So that'll bring up fourth down and seven from the Hendrickson 36. Single back in the backfield. Owsley drops, looking. He's got some time. Steps up in the pocket, completed the 25, down to the 20. That's Hegney all the way down to the 17 yard line. Nice connection, Owsley to Hegney. And it's really, really good um, field vision from Alzi right there. He could have easily taken off and run, but he wouldn't have got the first down. Waited for Hegde to sit down in the pocket in the middle of the zone defense, kept his composure in, uh, in the pocket, and, and threw a really nice ball for a first down. Cameron Telesforo checks into the ball game. He will line up. As a blocking tight end, motion man's Anderson. They fake the jet sweep. Owsley with some nice moves at the line of scrimmage as he's brought down at the 12, or the 16, pardon me. And he goes down there. The original line of scrimmage didn't pick up a yard. That probably going to be the final play of the third quarter. As the clock winds down, Westwood does get seven up on the board. And they're driving the ball really nicely right now. Three complete from the reservation here on senior night. It's been Henderson's night, 64 to seven the score. One quarter to go. We'll take a break and be right back. Westwood football continues in just a moment. Purchase a copy of this or any KMAC broadcast for personal use and portions of the proceeds go to your school. Whether you're making a highlight video or just want to be able to enjoy this game years in the future, send us a note to info at kmacsports.com. That's I-N-F-O at kmacsports.com. We can even do some editing for you for a small fee. Purchase any broadcast for personal use. Hit us up info at kmaxsports.com bringing your teams and your highlights to you we are kmax sports wwsn the westwood warrior sports network powered by kmax sports vibe media final quarter 64 to 7 westwood trailing here to hendrickson but we've seen some good stuff here the last few minutes and this is exactly what we were talking about what we wanted to see here in the second half you know you're down 51 to zero at halftime. Chances are you're not coming back to win the game, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just go out there and do what we can to better ourselves and, and better the outlook on the game. And that's what we've seen really. And we've seen it from some of the seniors that are getting their, their final snaps here on senior night. And it's, it's, it's a really cool thing to see. Fourth down, they, or second down, pardon me, in the fourth quarter, they go left to right. 
Here's Owsley, a little pitch on the jet sweep, trying to turn up field is Anderson. And he does barrel down, picks up a couple of yards as he gets down to the 14. That'll bring up a little bit more manageable third down. Third down in about eight, seven or eight. Better than third down and 12. Got that right. I like I like that I like that jet sweep that they run because they've they've been teasing it all night they've been faking it to the to the jet sweep and then running inside and they finally give it there. Now I think later on in the season you you may see an added element maybe the reverse to a, or a reverse pass coming off the yeah. end of it, just to add some more wrinkles into the offense in between two receiver or in between two defenders. Excuse me. And I'll tell you the beauty of what we're seeing here. Oftentimes you see where you've got your first team quarterback, first team quarterback to your second team quarterback. First guy goes out, the second guy comes in and can't run the, the offense that the first teamer does. Owsley can run the RJ Martinez offense. Oh nicely. He, absolutely. That that's that is one hundred percent what we're seeing here and and uh, that's that's comforting to your offensive coordinators and your head coach. First and goal from the four. Here's Owsley looking. Jump ball over the corner of the end zone. Trying to come back to it. There's your pass interference once again as he was looking for Hegde. Just kind of grabbed a hold of him. Like yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, it was a good good ball. Uh, gave gave Hegde a chance to make a play on it. Uh, however, the defender did not give Hegde a chance to make a play on it uh, while grabbing him. So that'll be... Your pass interference penalty, you would think. Is that, did, they, did we get the call there? Yeah, it was pass interference, so okay. they'll go half the distance to the two. And it'll be first and goal once again. 11-13 to go in the ball game. Here's Owsley. Empty backfield, two receivers to the near side. Owsley takes a snap. He'll call his own number into the end zone. Two-yard dive. Not really a dive, run. And you love to see that for, for a senior quarterback on senior night. Getting that touchdown in front of the friend, friend, ugh, excuse me, friends and family, and uh, getting some more points on the board for Westwood here. Uh, you know, just your design quarterback run. He finds his hole, and walks into the end zone. Indeed, here's Cactus Jack Elliott. Up and good, staying perfect. Take the positive. He's staying perfect. Take the positive. He is perfect, and we like to see that. He's got a really, really good, consistent leg there. That's one thing that we will say consistently through the season. It's Cactus Jack, good field goals and That's good right. extra points. That's exactly right. 64 to 14, 11 09 remaining in the ball game with its tangy but robust A1 thick and hearty sauce, two 100% beef patties, crispy bacon, and perfectly melted cheese. Whataburger's A1 Thick and Hearty Burger is the type of burger steak lovers dream about. I'm having dreams right now. Lucky for you, that dream is now a reality because it's finally back at Whataburger, Lake Creek Parkway and 620. But you better wake up and get moving because it's for a limited time only. So get over there and get you one or two a day. <laughs> and don't blame us for your bad and health. Don't, and don't. Uh, <laughs> That has to by far be one of my favorite transitions that I've that I've ever good. heard. You you rolled right into that's that. I tell you, that's thick a, and hearty A one sauce. Because I'm starving. I thought, I thought uh. you were describing the offense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this offense with its tangy forces by Ben Jensen, another one of the seniors. Good to see seniors making plays here in this contest. For sure, that might have been a little miscommunication. Yeah. Because I don't think he meant I to think kick I, it over there. Yeah, I think I think the plan was to kick it short. Uh, to the le to the far side of the field, because there was nobody no. on the near side. No, when and he was about five yards from being house yeah. housing yeah. him. But good good plays out there. Uh, I believe was that who who was that that made that that comeback tackle? Yeah, that was Ben, ben Jensen. Jensen. Ben Jensen, Jensen okay. in on the stop. And uh, yeah, I mean, great pursuit. Made, made the play because uh, there was nobody over here. No, no. When I said seam, I was being very conservative. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I know we paint pictures for folks on here, but I didn't want to say somebody messed up. So, yeah, it, was, it wasn't necessarily messed up. Maybe it was just a good, a good field. This time he does kick it short. Chris takes it at the 24, gets to the 30, the 35, 40, far sideline. He's got a blocker in front of him. He did step out of bounds. Ooh. Thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> that is one thing we have seen this kickoff team. 
there are lots of tackling things to work on right. next week in practice. Yes. But it go it, it, it again it goes back to the team the overall team speed that you have in Hendrickson. Um, that's just a a different gear that they're gonna yes. have more guys that have that level of, of speed than, Absolutely. than you are. Yeah. Other scoring updates, six forty six to go in the fourth, McNeil forty two, Vista Ridge twenty one. Five thirty four to go over at Bible. Stony Point thirty three, Leander nine. Still 14 to 7, Cedar Ridge over Vandy with a buck 27 to go in that one over at Monroe. Cedar Ridge just trying to hold on. Vandergrift just needs one more score to go overtime. So, see if we get some OT here in 13 6A. Timeout called by Hendrickson as Lucio was out on the field. Coach Killian didn't like what he saw. So they take the timeout, and we still have 10.55 remaining in the ballgame. We're on the road next week, heading over to Gupton Stadium, taking on Vista Ridge. Vista Ridge back in the district once again. That'll be a 6.45 pregame. Our chat with the Chief. 7 o'clock will be the kickoff. One of our favorite places to go, Gupton Stadium. They got good chicken there. I was going to say, why, why is that? <laughs> why got, is that a good, good place to go? They got good chicken there. They got chicken. Kicking chicken, as we call it. But we'll still want our thick and hearty burger, though. I'll tell oh, you. yes. Here's a first down play. Some running room there. Pass midfield all the way down to the 48. 26, Newsom. Eight yards just like that. Second down and two coming up. They do spot it at the 48. You can watch looking over to the sideline tonight, our, our clock operator, our scoreboard operator, get a little thrown off on those five-yard increments right there. Oh, there we go, 48. Motion back. Here is the option, running it to the near side. And a nice tackle. Coming in to finish him off. Sahith Thuma in on the stop for Westwood. It's a really good play there to string out that option all the way to the sideline. And then not bite on the fake pitch there yeah. and uh, just make a good sound tackle. Uh, so overall, that's a, that's, a, that's a highlight of the defense. Uh, yeah. Highlight tonight for them that they can go back and look at. Got a yard, third down and one coming up from the Westwood 48. Here is the give. Yep, you're going to give it to him. Dre Conley, you need a yard. He'll give you three. Every time. Yep. That's a big man to stop. 40, and that's Davis. Jaleel gets in there and makes a nice stop. Great sell there. There, there are some college college teams that that would bite on that sell. Absolutely, that, that, that they've got going. You can tell that that's something that they work on regularly, and they do it very, very well. Yeah. I mean, they fooled it's us. Great zone read. They sold. They fooled us four or five times At tonight least. on it. At least. We've still got 8.29 to go. Here's Lucio. He does give it to Conley, and Conley barrels all the way down to the 30. That'll be a Hendrickson first down. Oh, Hendrickson, they're even painful in conservation mode. Well, oh, when... Hosu took a shot there as stopping him. When Dre Conley is your conservation mode running back, yeah. that's, uh, you know you're doing pretty all right, I guess. But they've, but they've done well to bring him down and, and, and showing some good fundamentals in tackling because it's not an easy guy to bring down, and whenever you can, you enjoy it. Lucio shifts to the outside. Here's Nathaniel Davenport. He takes a snap, calls his own number, bounces out at the 25. Nice tackle from behind. Got to the 25, tried to shift to the outside, and Davenport goes down there. And that'll bring up second down, second down and four. Davenport, Lucio, and of course Barker. Three pretty capable quarterbacks here for Hendrickson. You always hear, you know, the, the old saying, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have a quarterback. <laughs> well, they got three. They got three. Here's a give. Conley is written down by Jaleel Davis once again. Davis kind of jumped on, went for the ride there. 
Not the full eight seconds, I think. He's going to he's gonna get scored trying, right. trying to win some money tonight in the rodeo that is trying to bring down big old Conley. Red zone opportunity here once again for Hendrickson. 19-yard line of Westwood, 649 with the clock rolling. Continues to be Davenport. He's got Lucio shifted out here in the slot over on the left side. One receiver to the far side. Conley stands in the I formation. Here's Davenport. Gives Conley down to the 10. Breaks about three tackles on the way. And is brought down by Holshoes. Three tackles every play. It seems like he's breaking. Line of scrimmage here, now the 10. Second down in a yard. Tribe still going down there, cheering on their defense. Oh, of course they are. You know how rowdy they can get. Here's Davenport out of the gun. Keeps it himself and brought down. Great stop. Great that's, stop. That's, ben Jensen. That's the first time that tonight that they played that zone read perfectly. They they see the ball is in the stomach of Conley and they don't pick yet. They don't pick who they're going to go after yet. They wait until don't bite. Exactly. They're not biting. They're not biting on the fake and they're waiting until Davenport has to make that decision to either hand the ball off or keep it himself and then they're breaking on the ball. That's how that's how you should play it and they played it perfectly on that play right there. Davenport lines them back up. Third down and two. Out of the eye formation. This time gives it to Conley. Conley barrels. He's pushed back to give him the forward progress all the way down to the seven. That'll be a Hendrickson first down. Got three yards. What I love, to, what I love that I'm seeing out of this Westwood defense right now is their guts. They're saying, look, you're, you're, you're beating us right now, but we're not giving up. Nope. We're not going to give up that goal line. At, at you know, at all costs, we're going to keep you out because we're sick of seeing you in there. First and goal from the eight. I'm sick of seeing you in this. Me too. <laughs> Here's Davenport out of the gun. A little high on the snap, a little trouble. Manages to gather it back in. He's got a whole bunch of Warriors coming right at him. And he is swarmed, dropped all the way back to the 20. 12-yard loss on the play. There you go. That'll work. Keep him out of the end zone, boys. That's it. Take it how you can get it. Clock rolls, 4.16 remaining. And it'll be third down and goal. Pigskin resting at the 20. So here's Davin. You pick up as many yards as, you, as, as he would have liked, but. Well, here's your third and goal from the 12. Here's the motion. And gives on the jet sweep. Turning upfield is Lucio. And Lucio stopped at the six. It'll bring up fourth down and goal. So your defense here, if you can keep them out of the end zone, it'll be a win. Yes, it would be a win. You'd think that they'd uh, kick a field goal here, but it looks like they're going to go for it. Yeah, Davenport heads over to the sideline. Or you, you, let the, yeah, you've the essentially got two quarterbacks out there because Lucio's out there. Here comes Davenport back out. You mentioned it, play clock at nine. So it rolls. Here's Davenport back out. Conley in the I formation. Two receivers to the near side, and he just takes a knee. That's nice. classy play. Nice. Absolute classy play right there from Hendrickson. Um, let the play clock get all the way down to, to one snap the ball. Yep. Don't even try to put the ball in the end zone again. Take the knee, turn the ball over on downs. Two yep. minutes left to go in the game. Love to see that. That's quickly back. Owsley at the helm here of the Westwood offense. In the backfield is Lyndon Jones. Good game for Lyndon Jones tonight. It's kind of one of those where when it's all said and done, you'll look at the score. You will have some guys that, that have been impressive. Lyndon Jones, one of them. He's been, he's been all over the field tonight on the offensive side of the ball, and he's been open on a couple, on a couple of things. He's made some good moves on screen passes. Uh, but, yeah, he's been, he's been a bright spot. A little bit of room right there for Lyndon Jones. Finds a near sideline. He's hit at the 35, and he goes out of bounds at the 39. Big shot for Jones as he hits the hole and just goes for about 25 yards. 
Just when you started talking about him being the bright spot, there he is being the bright spot. That's it. Who can we talk about now? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> this be, guy. It'd be neat if Owsley made a touchdown. Oh, well, that would be <laughs> Yeah, neat. how about that? Clock stops 131 to go. Anderson still in the ball game. Can we talk about Anderson? Anderson runs with the second group, although he plays a lot with the first group, so he stays out. They move him out to the far side. Here's Owsley. Takes a snap. Gets to midfield. Down to the 47. Maybe, That'll be a Westwood first down. Maybe we should just keep keep talking about uh, yeah, really, which yeah. guys which guys gonna do the next thing well because uh, yeah. You're like you're like uh, predicting everything. I know here. we've got the band whisperer up up above us, and so who do we talk about now? Be neat if Alzey did that again. Yeah, <laughs> right. We'll see that. Letting this one roll. It's at 48. Empty backfield. Trips to the far side. Two receivers to the near side. Four man front from Hendrickson. Here's Owsley right up the middle once again. Gets to the 45. He's hit right in the hip, and falls down to the 44. And we are at 30 seconds remaining. So Westwood, we'll see if they try to run another play. The offense looking around. Here's Owsley. Clock rolling. And I think they're just going to go ahead and call it good. They're going to go ahead and walk it on out, meet at midfield, and shake hands with this Hendrickson team that seems to just be on a different level. Yeah. They'll... They'll exchange pleasantries there. Coach Wood and Coach Killian will, will talk, and then they'll burn this film. Yes. Not, there are some positive you can take away. We, we talked about that. But this is one where, and again, with, 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 a, with a younger team, which Westwood is in, in many aspects a younger team, you can at 64 to 14 the final here on senior night. There are things that you can take out of this and that you learn from. Absolutely. There's a, there's a lot. There, there's there's things that that were done throughout the entirety of the game that you can look at and say that's good and that's bad. But really, what I think that you can take away from the from this game is you can look at your younger guys and you can say, look, we got down early. If we if we stick to the game plan, we punch the ball in the end zone earlier on, and we and we keep it close as a game, it gets a little more competitive. Or if you go down. They were able to look at the seniors tonight that, that played and got in, and they were still playing hard yep. throughout the entire entirety of the game. Even though you're down the entire game, you still have that leadership of your seniors saying, hey, look, we're still we're giving it everything we've got. You bet. We only have so many more times we get to go out on this field. This is senior night. We're giving everything we've got. Y'all learn from us. And that's, that's, I think, the biggest lesson or takeaway that – could be imparted on on this younger group tonight yeah yeah and the thing about it Stephen, this is game one of district i mean this is your first game you've still got you've got a whole bunch you've got a whole bunch of games left and the nice thing about it is yeah hendrickson's kind of in their own little galaxy right now there are a lot of other teams left on that schedule that are in your galaxy and plenty of winnable ball games coming up here for westwood i agree when you look at it there may be those top the top one or two teams in the district but then you've got that that group that big group down there in the middle in the middle of the district that that can get jumped on and, and, and leapfrogged over and this this Westwood team has every capability sure they do. Of, of, of beating those teams and um, and then maybe somewhere along whenever you play the the Vandergriff maybe you you come out and you you get the upset you know yeah. it's one, one of those yeah. things you never know Texas high school football um, it's a it's a it, it's a great thing, and um, like you said, game one. Yeah. Um, obviously, they didn't they didn't come and play how they wanted to play. Right. right. Uh, but they have every capability of coming out here, getting it done when they need to get it done, and making the playoffs. And, and once it happens, you never know. And you can you can scheme and, and try to and try to do whatever you need to do here, but it's it's a whole different it's a whole different environment when you get them on the field quickly. We, we talked about overtime maybe at Monroe Stadium. They're going to overtime there. So you can actually – that game is on the KMAX Sports Broadcast Network. Actually, actually, I believe it is also on – is that on 105.3? The Bat, I think that's yes, actually that, on. that's where they carry the Vandergriff games. On, on the FM. So you can catch that there. 
<laughs> there you go. We said we talked about that all night. How that one's going to be overtime watch. Man, we're getting good here. Uh, uh, Where's the go. casino? Exactly. Not that we're condoning gambling, but I was going to say that was more of a lucky, <laughs> lucky guess, probably. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let's let's take a look at that Whataburger school board. We'll just kind of breeze through here and uh, get everybody out of here because, uh, heck, I think I might want to go listen to that one. Yeah. Uh, so as we said, overtime there, they're they're tied up at 14. Cedar Park on their way to win number one, 37 to 22, as they lead over Central High. Austin High leads Lehman in the third quarter. That's 40 to 14. Brenham trails Houston Heights. That's 12 to six. Uh, three minutes remaining in the third quarter, uh, 42 to seven, uh, as they lead the Bowie Bulldogs. That's out of 25-6 a. Dripping Springs trails Canyon, 41 to 28. Your score there. That one in San Antonio that I was going on and on about has getting a little out of hand. Reagan leads. 26 to 14 over over Clemens Lockhart and Burnett 625 to go in the third quarter 23 to 21 Lockhart still leads there Wimberley seven minutes remaining in the ball game there they trail Canyon Lake 26 to 14 we may all go down tonight before it's all said and done uh, Rudder leads Navasota that's 27 to nothing Smithville trails Columbus 48 to 41 boy that's a nice battle of a couple of those uh, schools out east 290 area. Uh, Taylor trails Giddings. That's a 24 to 7 ball game. Johnson leads New Braunfels 35 to 17. Steele 30. Church Hill 14. Smithson Valley trailing Madison 17 to 14. That's a great battle there in the San Antonio region. Georgetown, another one of those sleeper teams, 45 to 12. They lead South San Antonio. Other action around the area. Trying to pull some stuff in here, just a little bit closer to us as we check out our. Whataburger scoreboard. Cedar Creek leads Fredericksburg. That's 24 to 19. Cedar Creek looking to go three and oh, how cool would that be? And LBJ leads La Vega at the half. That is a 14 to 10 score. Let's quickly go back over to 136A and get you a full update with what we have there. Uh, 136A. Of course, we have our final here. McNeil in the fourth quarter leads Vista Ridge 35 to 14 the overtime game that we discussed Stony Point all over Leander they win tonight 33 to 9 Vista Ridge the next opponent coming up for Westwood that'll be next Friday on the road at Gupton Stadium over at Leander ISD 6:45 pregame and our 7 or 6:45 pregame chat with the Chief we will have that for you 7 o'clock kickoff Westwood will look to bounce back and I guarantee you guys Anthony and the coaching staff will have them ready. Uh, I guarantee as, as ugly as this was tonight on the scoreboard, he'll have them ready to go against Vista Ridge because you're, you're going back down Vista Ridge more along in the lines there of Austin High, and, and, and you bounce back. You're 0-1 right now, but, you know, you take care of your business, and I think you'll be okay. Yeah, this is, this is a game really that uh, you were, you know, I just think from from wire to wire, just a little outmatched, yep. unfortunately. But coming up next week, you're not that way. Nope. It's not it's aboard here with WWSN. Thanks to the Booster Club sponsors, ATX Football. That's the Austin Youth Football League. Fabulous Affairs Catering, fabulousaffairscatering.com. We hope to get Leslie on here at some point. Uh, Ferguson, the bath and bath, kitchen, and lighting gallery. Brand new location right there on the northwest corner of 183 in Mopac. Flicks Brew House in Round Rock. Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin. Torchy's Tacos. Got to talk about Torchy's Tacos. Oh, man. Look at that. Well, that happened quick. 17 to 14. Now Vandy. That's not a final, yeah, is it? That's what it says yeah, right That here. is a final. Vandegrift knocks off Cedar Ridge. Boy, welcome to 13-6A, Vandegrift. Jeez. Jeez, Louise. Torchy's Tacos, uh, sorry, 11-5-21, Ranch Road 620, Anderson Mill and 620. Of course, Whataburger, been talking about them all night. Go try that A1 uh, Thick and Spicy Burger. We'll be talking about it for weeks. 620 in Lake Creek, Ginny Ray Photography, Ed Lundry Real Estate, and, of course, warriorsports.org, the official website. So, yeah, Vandy, Vandy with an early jab in 13-6A right there. Starting 3-0, and they uh, scored 17 unanswered there, down 14-0 wow. early. Uh, defense holds them in the game and score 17 unanswered to to take a uh, yeah take one away from Cedar Ridge there yeah going to be a fun season I bet they're super excited over at that campus right now got to give a big shout uh, back at the KMAC Sports uh, Broadcast Studios our man Mike Miller our quality administrator tonight also got to give a special thanks to Suna Vincat she was checking in uh, on us uh, tonight as well so thank you Suna 
KMAC Sports President Chuck Licata, hey, folks. as well as uh, Program Director Mr. Merle Bertrand, Christina Weber, Social Media Director for KMAC Sports and Vibe Media, of course, Tim Cox, mentioned Suna, all of the fine folks over at the Westwood Warrior Football Booster Club, Dr. Sankow twisting and tweaking the dials back there, making sure everything was going smooth, 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 smooth. So you thank heard. you back there, Dr. Cow. Of course, my man right here, Mr. Cabler, Stephen Cabler, calling this beautifully. Love it, man. Appreciate Ooh, it. Love Always it. love being here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing that these kids are going to do. We're going to forget about this one and uh, get ready for uh, yeah. next week. Hit the water burger and get thick and hearty. Thick it's and tangy. hearty. And taquitos in the morning for crying out loud. Yes, sir. Westwood loses 64 to 14, 645 pregame next week from Gupton Stadium, taking on Vista Ridge. From all of us to all of you, have a great weekend. Stay safe, everybody. If you're out in the weather, watch those skies. You never know what could happen for all of us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.